Good morning, space enthusiasts, and welcome to our international kickoff of the Galileo Masters and the Copernicus Masters, two global innovation competitions awarding the best solutions using Galileo and Copernicus data. My name is Ines Kühnert, and I'm not only the host of this event, but also head of Galileo and Copernicus competitions at AZO. Today, we start our journey along the Space of Innovation Highway together with all of you. We unite our network to hear from the most important key players in the European space policy, learn about this year's topic challenges, and get the chance to interact and address questions to our former winners and current prize partners. Now, let's jump into our virtual electrical vehicle and start our journey. Our partner network this year is enriched by research institutions, space agencies, EU institutions and ministries, industrial partners, banks and venture capitalists, clusters and technology parks, and more than 50 business incubators to support you all across Europe. We are very proud to say they are the backbone and the success of our competitions. This year, 115 partners from 31 countries offer their resources to help startups and individuals to break through with their solutions. A special thanks to our partner network who have joined the competition this year. The winners of the competitions get access to an overall prize pool of around 1.68 million euros this year, including cash and in-kind prices. The kickoff is only the beginning of a series of events hosted by our partners all over Europe and beyond to support you in developing your idea, solution, prototype or business for a successful submission to the competitions. I would like to invite you to check our website for any upcoming webinars and ride along the Space of Innovation Highway with us. Observation and navigation are the core of Copernicus and Galileo, but there is many more to it. And I'm happy our keynote speakers will shed light in the possibilities the EU space programs offer. The first keynote of today is coming from the Director General of the European Space Agency, Josef Aschbacher himself. Even if he couldn't join live, he didn't miss the opportunity to send a video message since he's the founding father of the Copernicus Masters 10 years ago. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Joseph Aschbacher, and I'm the Director General of the European Space Agency. I have great pleasure to welcome you to the 11th edition of the Copernicus Masters competition. It is hard to believe that it has already been a decade since the first Copernicus Masters competition has been launched in 2011. It was actually me who supervised the early days of the Masters and ever since I have been seeing the contribution that the competition can make to the Earth observation community in Europe and in the world. It was a very busy decade, both for ESA and our partners in the European Commission, ECMWF and UMITSAT. The Copernicus program has evolved from the concept stage to become the biggest and most successful public Earth observation program in the world. Europe is now an Earth observation powerhouse. Today, we have eight high-performance Copernicus Sentinel satellites in orbit and many more in development. There are more than 420,000 registered Sentinel data users that develop advanced solutions for environmental and climate management and for many scientific, industrial, or security applications. Every year, with each Sentinel satellite being launched and its data becoming available, the opportunities to innovate and develop a space business are expanding. Copernicus Masters is one of the key facilities designed to ramp up the use of this growing Copernicus infrastructure and to empower researchers, startups, and aspiring teams to become active participants in the local, regional, and global Earth observation markets. It is my great pleasure to declare that the Copernicus challenges and prizes are now open for a new competition. As you all know, the Masters will provide the financial resources 
to support the best and brightest business ideas submitted for the competition. But this is not all. The competition also provides visibility and recognition to the students, early career scientists and business owners to step up in their field or build up their companies. The award winners are given the chance to become leaders in their domains. They promote scientific excellence, innovation, and raise important awareness about Earth observation in their communities and in their countries. Many of them manage to pilot their master projects on a much larger scale in the further process. We fully recognize the potential of ideas accumulated through the masters and the potential of the people and the teams who apply. This is why we are providing additional incentives to those who take up the master's challenge. The proposals that are being put together for the masters can and should find their way to the market to attract investors. Both our ESA INQ program and the European Commission's Cassini initiative focus on supporting this kind of innovative and commercially viable EU products and services. This is why I urge every participant to the masters to take the opportunity to seek the mentorship, technical advice and business development coaching that is available to you through the masters so that you are fully prepared for the many opportunities that are ahead of you. I would like to add, I highly appreciate the continuous and successful implementation of the competition thanks to a strong ESA and European Commission partnership. The involvement of our partners from DLR, HZO, and the private sector is crucial as well. Jointly, we have created a very strong European network and accumulated important experience regarding business incubation and commercialization of ideas. Let me conclude by recalling that as part of a holistic approach, beyond the Copernicus Masters, there are also the Galileo Masters, equally dealing with a European space flagship project. I see potential synergy between the two competitions. Combining the Earth observation and navigation domains might generate new ideas for applications. In general, the EO domain provides detailed sensor data for each point on the globe and the real-time use of this sensor data at the precise location of a user device may open up new opportunities. Let us see what the future holds and what bright minds came up with. I am sure that the demand for the Copernicus Masters competition will stay strong also this year and I look forward to meeting you again in December at the award ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Aschbacher. I don't think it is too much to say that without him and my managing director, of course, the Copernicus Masters wouldn't be what it is today. A partner that also supported the competitions in their baby shoes is the European Commission, as Mr. Aschbacher already said. I'm happy to introduce you now to Catherine Cavada, the Director for Innovation and Outreach at DG DEFIS in the European Commission for our next keynote. Welcome, Ms. Cavada. Good morning to everybody. Thank you very much, Ines. I hope that you can hear me. Uh, yes. I have to say yes, that uh, uh, for, for quite some years, uh, uh, I followed this event with a great interest. Uh, so you can understand that uh, is a special pleasure, a great pleasure for me uh, to open this new round of Copernicus and Galileo Masters and welcome all of you to this established and well-structured event. Organizing uh, such a big event during uh, the times of pandemic, uh, it's not an easy task. And let me start by congratulating you. I, I can make it in the name not only of the European Commission, but everybody who participated today in this event for all the efforts that you mobilized and you activate in order to make this happen. Let me also wish that next year we will organize the same event but under the uh, desired normal ecosystem that everybody would like to find. I'm convinced that uh, as in the previous years, this competition will stimulate three things creativity that we need in europe inspiration 
without anticipation. There's no possibility of something very important and very disruptive and innovation. And I'm looking forward to the solutions that participants will present in the course of the next months. For the first year, the European Commission will define two challenges which will be presented later. Definitely, I don't want to spoil Martina's presentation in the coming minutes, but I would like to highlight already that these two challenges are in the areas of high political priority, reflecting policy priorities of the European Union in the frame of the Green Deal and the Horizon Europe. Personally, as somebody who served the space policy in the European Commission for more than 20 years, I do not need to stress the key contribution of space technologies, of space data, or of space application uh, to achieve the ambitious goals of the Commission has set at the beginning of its mandate, and in particular now, where we have a great geopolitical mandate which is also human-centered. As director responsible for space innovation, I recognize, I acknowledge, and definitely I count on the European new space potential to offer innovation and efficient solutions. Our goal as European Commission is to foster and to promote the European new space input for cutting edge solutions, finding their way beyond our space domain into the wider society, because it's there where the space belongs, everywhere in our society. Let me conclude by saying that my presence today has one main objective to invite all interest startups to take up these challenges and to participate in the competition. We are here in order to promote the new space. We have the Cassini Initiative and we have all the ambition and the toolbox in order to do it. So please come and please come along with your ideas, with your inspiration, and with the fresh look that we need in the European Union. I wish you a successful meeting today and all the best for the successful participation. Looking forward to the end of the year for the 2021 Masters. Everybody is welcome and thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you very much, Ms. Cavada, for the warm welcome to, to all of us and also to us as AZO, of course, as a team. This is not only a special day for us kicking off the competitions, but also for the GSA, going live with their rebranding to USPA today. Therefore, I'm happy that, especially in these busy days, the executive director of GSA found the time to send us a video message to kick off the competition. Mr. Rodrigo da Costa. It is a pleasure to be part of the 2021 International Kickoff Meeting for the first year as the Executive Director of the European Union Agency for the Space Programme. There are not many markets which will raise more than 70% over the next decade. But this is the case of the European downstream space market using GNSS. The revenues are expected to grow to 65 billion in 2029. And the varieties of markets involved are large, from aviation and agriculture to maritime and location-based services and more. You see, the European space is bringing many opportunities. And it is the role of our agency, USPA, to support this European innovation and entrepreneurship. So 
we are happy to be a partner of this competition for the last 13 years because the Galileo Masters have been a beacon for space innovators looking to make the best use of Galileo and Agnos in their applications. As a global innovation competition, it has been contributing to the European GNSS market uptake, but also reinforcing Europe's growing ecosystem of space-based startups. Many great ideas led by young and talented entrepreneurs have come to light thanks to the support of our dedicated market development professionals who work together with the competition partners. With youth pay in place, our partnership is more important than ever. With an amplified scope, the new agency will be promoting the commercial market uptake of Copernicus and coordinating the rollout of GOSAT.com. In our long lasting partnership with the Galileo Masters, we haven't limited our scope to eGNSS only. We have been encouraging the forging of new synergies between Galileo, Copernicus, and Agnos as components of the EU space program. Over the years, we have sponsored over 15 prizes from the long running GSA challenges to the Galileo Copernicus Synergy Challenge. The agency has supported outstanding ideas, which have received more than 200,000 euros, and also provided many winners with free access to the incubation center of their choice. Allow me to highlight some recent Galileo Master success stories, such as Anixa Robotics from Germany, winner of last year's Space for Our Planet Challenge, with their autonomous trash collection robot for grass and gravel, or the Sports for VIP idea from Greece, which won the Space for Being Safe and Healthy Challenge of 2020 with a wearable system that aims to allow visually impaired people to be included in sports. In 2021, Youthpa is contributing once again with four challenges in line with the current EU priorities such as the EU Green Deal and the Europe Fit for Digital Age. The Space for Fun Challenge, targeting the use of EGNSS and Copernicus in gaming, sports, leisure and tourism. The Space for Our Planet Challenge, looking for ideas enabled by Galileo, Egnos and Copernicus to support the fight to overcome climate change and environmental degradation. The Space for Being Safe and Healthy Challenge, with space downstream data at the service of safety and health during the pandemics. And the SATCOM Challenge, for ideas combining EGNSS, georeference data, with satellite-based broadcasting and telecommunication services. To conclude, let me stress that Galileo and Egnos are innovative components of the EU space program and are already igniting the next generation of location-based applications. Their future services will bring more opportunities for enhanced positioning, robust navigation, and precise timing solutions, which will generate even more opportunities for aspiring entrepreneurs, space startups, and SMEs. Likewise, and building on the legacy of its predecessor, the European Union Agency for the Space Programme will remain a user and market-driven operational agency, which will bring economic growth, multiply innovation, and guarantee the safety and security of the Union's Space Programme. I'm looking forward to seeing innovative ideas from all over Europe. Thank you. Thanks and greetings to Mr. Da Costa and Yuspa. Now let me introduce you to Azodo's Managing Director that founded Azodo now 17 years ago with the Galileo Masters as first innovation competition. Thorsten Rudolf, welcome.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is our 17th international kickoff since AZO launched the Galileo Masters in 2004. Since then, we have built a steadily growing innovation network for the European space program Galileo and Copernicus. We are very proud that all the founding partners who have contributed to the growth of this network in recent years are with us today. Many thanks to Josef Aschbacher, Catherine Cavada and Rodrigo da Costa for the inspiring uh, keynote. And uh, congratulations to Rodrigo for the first international kickoff as an executive director of the European Union Agency for the Space Program. Now space has become instrumental for our globalized and digitalized world and plays an important role in tackling climate change and for the implementation of the European Green Deal. As a result, over the last 10 years, the space industry has expanded globally with a record number of commercial companies investing in space technology. Now the space masters are part of this success story and this event is an excellent occasion to briefly introduce our results of the last decade. I'm delighted to present the top 250 companies that have, have grown out of the innovative ideas of more than 17,000 Copernicus Masters and Galileo Masters participants since 2004. Many of these companies entered these prestigious innovation competitions during the early stages of uh, the development and in the meantime they have established their businesses in various application segments of the Earth observation and satellite navigation market. And the wide multi-level partner network of the competition has strongly supported this successful transformation. Initially, both competitions were focused on data-driven value-added services, creating an impact in many industries such as agriculture, finance, transport, insurance, climate or location-based services, telecommunication, media and security. And in the meantime, we have expanded to the whole range of the space value chain from downstream via midstream to upstream business. This includes new businesses for the development, production and operation of small satellite constellations, small satellite launchers and new use cases for 5G, machine to machine or the Internet of Things using satellite communication. The day after more than a decade, we look back with a pride at a vibrant European new space economy that did not exist in this form uh, 10 years ago. So thanks to the cooperation with our partners at regional, national and European level, innovators and uh, from all areas benefit from this business development, which above all includes growth financing. Let me share with you the impressive results of the Space Masters from the last decade. Besides having created more than uh, 7,700 jobs, uh, these companies generated 425 million in total turnover in 2020. In recent years, they have also raised around 982 million in venture capital, which has given a significant boost to the rise of the Earth observation and satellite navigation industry in Europe. The universe of space technologies and their exploitation in industrial and consumer markets on Earth is a new and promising focus uh, for the venture capital industry. The Space Masters offers access for private and institutional investors to an excellent deal pipeline, starting early in the technical, uh, technological development and allowing it in, at, uh, to attract promising investment targets at European level. More than 120 institutional and private investors have now participated in diverse financing rounds. Last year alone, over 400 million out of a total of uh, 980. 82 million euros have been investors. For us, this is a clear sign that this decade belongs to the new space economy. Today, after more than a decade, we look back with pride at a vibrant European new space economy that did not exist in this form 10 years ago. The Space Masters will continue to offer entrepreneurs, students, researchers and professionals from industry to make a next step with their new innovative ideas. We can only invite all of you from around the world to apply to the Space Masters. Many thanks to all, all, uh, all our partners 
at regional, national and European level. I wish you all uh, of I wish all of you lots of success in this year's competitions and I'm now looking forward to the presentations of the individual challenges. Thank you so much and I give back to Ines. Thank you, Thorsten. It is really impressive what we achieved with our innovation competitions in the past years. I think now is the perfect time to hear ourselves, uh, for ourselves, from one of our former winners of Copernicus Masters, the ESA Challenge winner of 2019. He will tell us what happened after his participation in the competition. Welcome, Max Golder, the CEO and co-founder of Constellar. We are not, we are unfortunately not hearing you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I was still muted on your end. So thank you very much, Ines. Um, so yeah, first of all, uh, dear Thorsten, dear Mr. Aschbacher, dear guests, thank you for having me here. It is a great honor for me to be uh, speaking here today. And full disclosure, we actually started the first time competing in the um, Competing with Masters 2017. And back then, I must confess, I had absolutely no intention of founding a company whatsoever. I was simply intrigued by the idea of the challenge. So what we wanted to do, or what the challenge was back then, was create the mission, the small set mission with the largest impact for the smallest budget. And that was, was fantastic. Back then I was working as a scientist at Fraunhofer, um, as a mission scientist, and I thought, okay, why not simply going for it? And nobody was more surprised than I was when we actually get called and uh, be told that we would be one of the finalists. While we didn't win the competition back then, as Ines has pointed out, it took two more years to win it. Um, we won other things. We won, first of all, a recognition for our idea. And this was a great feeling that ESA had a look, DLR had a look, other stakeholders had a look. And I said, look, there's a lot of potential in your idea. You might not be winning yet, but we see the potential. This was a very, very good feeling. And on the other hand, we won an ecosystem. And that was even more important because this ecosystem started asking a lot of different questions, which I actually dreaded back then. It was questions not about, about the technology, I'm a technologist at heart, but it was questions I, I haven't really thought about so far, about the market, the commodization strategy, uh, uh, the road to profit, and so on. But only these questions then helped us to develop this idea into not only a concept, but a viable business. And um, today I'm, I'm very happy to announce that, um, uh, or to, to tell you, that we are part of the space system. We are part of the space ecosystem. We are partnering with the big players now. OHB has invested in us. We are working with the DLR and other big players in the ecosystem. And this would not have been possible um, without, this, uh, without this initial idea. So initially, our concept was to provide precise temperature data to leverage the capacity of the infrared for agriculture, to provide water savings for agriculture, and to do it on a planetary scale. And uh, what was an idea back then is now a venture-backed company. Yes, only a year old, but 20 people, that is not too bad. And um, this, this growing international team we have is making things possible, which haven't been possible back then. Because in the end, what an idea needs, from my perspective, is four things. First of all, you need to be solving a real problem. And as Torsten has announced and other speakers before him, most of the sustainable development goals will be needing space assets to be tackled. And which means that we do need these space assets to solve the big challenges of our time. Um, next, um, what, we, what you need is the right timing. And again, we've seen the numbers here. Uh, the investment into space is soaring. There's so much venture capital available into space at the moment. Even last year has doubled compared to, next, uh, to last year. And that's been despite a pandemic. So it's a very good time to have that. And on the other hand, space is on top of everybody's uh, uh, head at the moment. We're drilling for fossils on foreign planet riverbeds. We're going to go back on the moon. We're flying drones on different planets. It is a fantastic 
time to be in space. So use that time. I'm not sure if it's ever going to be coming back. So use that. Um, what next need, and that's actually one of the most important things, is the fertile ground. You need partners to develop with. You need partners with experience, which can also challenge your idea. Because only if it is challenged, you start thinking in different, in different routes. You start thinking out of the box and you can involve and improve your idea. And if you look at the, the panel today with ESA, with DLR, um, with Planet, the whole commercial sector, um, that is the ideal growing ground for your idea. And the last thing is you need a push. You need an initial push. An idea can be like an avalanche. So it has a lot of momentum. And at some point it's unstoppable. But initially, like an avalanche, you need this push. And Copernicus Masters could be, or Galileo Masters, the Space Master in general, could be exactly that push what you need. Obviously, you have to push yourself. Uh, but still, it is a fantastic feeling when an idea takes off. And um, I'm, I'm happy to say that even though we're only a year old, we are less than nine months away from our first launch. And that is, that is a fantastic feeling to create something which then becomes a reality eventually. So I urge you, take the brilliant ideas out of your head, put them on the paper, send them in. You cannot lose anything. The only thing you will lose is an opportunity if you don't do it. So do it, go for it, subject yourself to maybe the criticism, but also to the opportunity to evolve your idea and become part of the space ecosystem. And with this, I thank you very much for your time and I wish you the best of luck with your efforts. Bye and back to Ines. Thank you very much, Max. It is a pleasure to hear from you that you enjoyed the competition so much and that you encourage our potential new participants to join in. I really love to think back of the days when we still celebrated uh, you on the last Space Awards in Helsinki in 2019. And I'm more than pleased to see what has become out of your first submission to the competition. I think what everyone needs to become successful one day is courage. And um, Max already mentioned it. The first step is always courage. With courage to innovate, all dreams can become reality. We offer you the platform to share your innovative ideas with us, get them evaluated in and at the end, ideally supported by our partner network. But before we dive deep into what topic challenges we offer in this year's competitions, let me quickly point out some housekeeping rules. There is like a question button in your toolbar that you should see, which allows you to type in any question to any speaker. Please feel free to add questions there anytime during our next presentations, and I will make sure to address it to the respective speaker in our dedicated Q&A sessions. If due to a lack of time, of course, any question um, that we might not be able to be addressed and answered, we will follow up on them after the event. Any other technical or administrational question um, that you might have and that we are able to answer, please also send them to us via the question field. I do have the questions here on my laptop and I've seen that some of you already um, used it. So please feel free to um, also to the others to use it as well. We will try our best and answer them all during your event, our event. <laughs> In this respect, I would like to remind all of our speakers again kindly to stick to their timeline and excuse myself already if I might be forced to interrupt you when exceeding it. But now let's dig in a, a little deeper into the competitions. The Galileo Masters and the Copernicus Masters submission, submission phase runs from 19th April until 19th July. So the perfect time to submit your solution to the competitions is actually now. You can do this by reg registering in the secure database on the respective websites of the competitions. And the competitions offer a variety of topic challenges, but also topic less so-called prizes. To choose the right topic challenge, we will now hear directly from our partners what they are looking for in their challenges. Let's start with the first one, the European Space Agency and their own challenge presented by Tony Tucker nielsen Acting Director of Earth Observation Programs Directorate. Welcome, Mr. Tucker nielsen Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, 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 my webcam. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, we hear you. Okay, thank you very, uh, th thank you very much. So uh, my name is uh, Tony Tolga Nielsen. I'm the acting uh, director of the Earth Observation Programs at the European Space Agency. It is my pleasure to introduce today the ESA Copernicus Master Challenge. Uh, we have heard from uh, our keynote speakers earlier this morning. Uh, in particular, I think Max hit really the nail. Uh, in this context, 
Uh, it is evident that the Copernicus Masters is currently a leading competition in Earth's observation. Uh, this is not by chance. In the past two decades, ever since the announcement of the DM DMES and then what became the Copernicus program, Europe have invested in everything from space assets to ground segment elements to computing and cloud facilities to first class data science in order to build the first class Earth's observation system. In fact, uh, these capabilities we have already transformed how these capabilities have already transformed how the management of Earth's resources and other physical assets can be done and will be done in the future. But this journey is far from over. Europe is now creating ambitious environmental uh, agenda. It will set the new trajectory for our social and economic development. It will lead to a carbon neutral and more sustainable society. We are already seeing the outlines of that future. To achieve this vision, ESA is now fully dedicated to build new Copernicus satellites and start new programs for our member states and with our partners to deliver much needed technologies, data and science that can measure our progress towards these goals. So everyone's aspirations are going up, but uh, we still need competitions like masters and people like you uh, joining this more than ever to step up your efforts in research and commercial exploitation of Copernicus data and to reinforce Europe's commitment to the Green Deal. In the 2021 uh, edition of the Copernicus Masters, the ESA challenge will aim to answer a central question about the potential of connecting different observational data with artificial intelligence, earth system science and modeling approaches. This is to stimulate development of an interactive digital replica of our planet. Uh, we call it the digital twin earth. We already started to tap to this potential, but this is our top priority. And I believe that we must work together and be open to new ideas to achieve the vision for these planetary digital twins. So if I, I can have the next slide, yeah. We invite you to submit proposals that will innovate and create new solutions on the ESA challenge. We seek concepts which will aim to visualize, monitor and forecast natural, societal, economic, and industrial trends around the world. They should focus on real issues and address real problems such as advancing and protecting resilient blue and green infrastructures, ensure food security, building up climate adaptation solutions, addressing population health and well-being, and prevent and manage pollution on, on land, sea, and air. So if I can have the next slide. So um, your proposals will be evaluated by an independent ESA experts team who will carry out a technical assessment of the submissions based on the key criteria such as innovation, technological feasibility, or the impact it can make. We want you to know, we, we want to, know you and the winning team will receive 10,000 euros in a cash prize and there will be a possibility to access uh, 10,000 worth of commercial data sets from the Copernicus contributing, contributing missions uh, in the Copernicus data warehouse. So if I can have the next slide. Okay. There's no next slide. Yes. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you for your attention. Um, I would uh, like to ask you to save your questions for the end, uh, which will be handled by uh, the ESA Copernicus Innovation Officer, Anna Bosikowska. So thank you very much for your attention. Yes, indeed. Um... The slide with Anna on, on it is uh, we saved for our Q&A a little bit later. Thank you, okay. Mr. Tokenewson, for your introduction.
We will have Anna joining us, as I said, in a few minutes. But for now, I would like to welcome uh, Gunther Schreier. We've already seen him on the camera just a few seconds ago. So please, Gunther, feel free to switch on your camera again and also unmute yourself. He's the director, the deputy director of the German uh, Remote Sensing Data Center at DLR. And uh, please welcome Gunther. You are still muted, yes. No, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, yeah. Ines. I think you hear me now. You hear me now? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, thank you, Ines. Um, dear distinguished guests, colleagues and friends, dear participants of this virtual meeting who might even consider to apply for one of the Copernicus Master's Prizes, who might consider to participate in one of the challenges you are being presented in this webinar. DLR, as a founding member of this Copernicus Challenge, is proud to continue this year in looking for innovative ideas. DLR, that is specifically in my case, the German Remote Sensing Data Center, more than 200 colleagues of mine in Oberpfaffenhofen near Munich, in Neustrelitz, north of Berlin, and other places, including satellite data receiving stations near the North Pole and the Southern Polar regions. This data acquired, and many more Earth observation data, especially from the Copernicus Sentinel missions, is used to develop new technologies to apply new science in the management and the analysis of the data. We therein focus to develop new products, new applications in three domains, land monitoring, risk mapping and mitigation, and atmosphere. An overarching theme therein is for us, how can we contribute to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals? How can we help to increase the well-being and the health of the global citizen? global change, global pandemic, really challenging goals. Challenging as we talk about the resources we spend, resources which might be lost for the generations to come, resources which might not have the conditions nor the time to get renewed, renewable resources. Next to the raw materials and food, energy is such a resource. Energy is key resource to fight and mitigate climate change provided we generate energy from renewable resources, provided we use it wisely, save energy wherever possible. Sustainability is therefore a key idea of our work and also for the DLR Copernicus Master's Prize. As mentioned, human health is the other focus. Sustainability and health go often hand in hand. Burning of fossil fuel is often not good for human health. Garbage dumps are neither. Last year, when we encourage participants to issue Earth observation-based ideas on mitigating epidemic, pandemic impacts, we all thought all this nightmare would have been over when we start next year's challenge in 2021. Unfortunately, it is not. We are still in a global crisis most of us have never faced before. The past 16 months have taught us to be prepared, not to stop to support and implement brilliant ideas to fight global pathogens. We are aware that the themes of our challenge, global change, sustainable use of resources, and human health is pretty idealistic. Ideas which are not necessary as solid foundation for a startup and a business plan. But maybe you change also to the next slide, please. And yes, we are supporting new businesses, startups, new space 4.0. But we encourage not only entrepreneurs to apply for the DLR challenge. Don't be worried if you have an innovative approach, but not yet an idea how to make a business out of it. Maybe you have even not the intention to open up a business. Apply in any case. When you will be a lucky winner, next to the attention you will get, you will be rewarded with a cash prize and the possibility to access commercial data from the Copernicus Data Warehouse. Data which might help to bring your idea to the next level. We are expecting your ideas, and I'm happy to answer your question at the end of this session. Thank you very much. So, and we will also hear um, you in a bit for our round of Q&A with our audience. So don't forget, you can all use the question tab to address any question you would like to as our speakers via this tool. Our next speaker presenting uh, the contribution of the BMVI in the Copernicus Masters is Alexandra Förster. So please welcome Alex.
Okay. <laughs> Will you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, we hear yeah, you. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. My name is Alexandra Förster, and I have the pleasure to present our digital transport challenge here today. The challenge has been issued by the German Federal Ministry of Transport and Digital Infrastructure with support from the DLR Space Agency. To illustrate how important satellite information is, I would like to start with a headline I came across last week. So next slide, please. In February 2011, the Italian oil tanker Savina Kaline was attacked by pirates in the Arabic Sea. The tanker was on its way from Sudan to Malaysia. After the attack, there has been no reported communication with the vessel and no information regarding the 22 crew members on board. One day after the hijack, Cosmos SkyMed satellites acquired the first images of the oil tanker. So as you can imagine, without satellite data, it would have been harder to precisely locate the ship. In our challenge, we are not only interested in maritime safety. Next slide, please. We are looking for solutions that use Copernicus data to solve major problems faced by transport systems today. Solutions can solve problems on the local, national, or international level and can target any mode of transportation. So to give you an idea, I would like to show you three examples of our last winners. And the two girls you see here developed a solution called Trans-Ice Navigation. It analyzes the extent, thickness, and concentration of sea ice to determine the safest travel routes in polar regions. So next slide, please. LiveVO is a startup and it monitors ground deformation and vegetation along critical infrastructure. Its aim is to reduce manual inspectations by monitoring the entire network via satellite. So coming to my last example, the startup Havadava shows the distribution of air pollution and its connection to urban mobility. It supports public authorities to improve air quality. So coming now to the most important part of our challenge, our price pool. Apart from the 5,000 euro cash price, I would like to highlight that our winner will be able to apply for admission to an ESA business incubation center based in Germany. Further prices are six months access to our cloud computing platform Code.de, access to our business networks, and attendance and presentations at a transport related event and uh, the possibility to access 10,000 euro worth of commercial data sets from the Copernicus contributing missions. So thank you for your attention, and I'm really looking forward to your transport related ideas. Thank you, Alex. I like the practical examples that you gave, especially since you won't be able to join us for the Q&A a little later. Last but not least, under our first block, Courage to Innovate, we have two challenges that are the same in Galileo Masters and Copernicus Masters, just with a different price pool. As both of the challenges are run by AZO itself, with some partners that support us here, let me welcome again Thorsten for the introduction of the university challenges. So yeah, you know, thanks again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm proudly present this year's uh, university challenge to you, which is uh, looking for students and research associates uh, to compete uh, for the chance uh, to transform their bright ideas into successful commercial ventures. In this challenge, uh, we are seeking to uh, bridge the gap between Earth observation and satellite navigation research and entrepreneurship. And in addition to establishing links uh, to the world of business, the University Challenge increases uh, the exposure 
and credibility of student-driven innovations at the global level. Yes, submissions are welcome uh, in any relevant application field, but not limited. Um, so we are looking for applications using satellite navigation and Earth observation in different domains, for example, in agriculture, transportation, emergency management, environmental protection, renewables, energies, tourism, leisure. So it's really open for everybody. And uh, yeah, we are offering a really attractive price pool uh, to the winning teams uh, next to a cash prize. Uh, participants can benefit benefit from a consulting package being offered by Alpha Build and the Munich Business School um, to develop uh, the solution into a valid uh, business case and the possibility uh, to access um, 10,000 euro uh, worth of commercial data sets from the Copernicus contributing emissions in the Copernicus data warehouse. Uh, furthermore, uh, the most promising teams will get access to the 21 uh, business incubators of the European Space Agency in Europe. So you can find these business incubators nearly all over Europe. And um, this is really a, a, a wonderful chance to connect uh, universities and uh, the ESA Business Incubation Center program. Um, and last but not least, uh, the winners uh, compete for the overall winner 2021 with a cash prize of 10,000 euro and uh, the possibility to take part in the European Space Week and uh, to be announced there uh, as the winner, the world winner of uh, not only the challenge, the universal challenge, but also the opportunity to win uh, the Galileo or Copernicus uh, prize. And now it's up to you uh, to make your business idea a reality, take part, take the chance and uh, grab the prizes. Thanks a lot, Mr. Rudolph, again. I would like to invite Gunther now from DLR again. Mr. Rudolph, please stay with us. And um, last but not least, Anna Bozhikovska, as Mr. Tokar Nielsen already announced, she will be representing ESA and its Copernicus Space Office up on the virtual stage. Um, yes. So I do see Gunther. Yes, good morning. Uh, this is Anna Bozhikovska speaking. Anna I hope you can hear well. me well. Yes, we hear you. And Mr. Rudolph, are you still there as well? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so what um, we learned at the beginning in the presentation uh, of our speakers already, I do have a question on my own. As the maturity of submissions is sometimes unclear to our participants, Anna, maybe you could explain a little bit more in detail what ESA seeks in terms of technological feasibility and readiness level with this challenge. Uh, thank you, Ines. Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, I wanted to answer this question by uh, iterating a little bit the building elements of uh, ESA Digital Twin Earth concept. So we are looking here at um, uh, connecting different um, uh, observation sensor networks coming both from satellites, from uh, uh, Internet of Things, uh, data coming from different socioeconomic databases. And uh, at the same time, uh, we hope that uh, this, um, uh, this challenge will also bring in uh, some innovative concepts uh, in terms of how to analyze this data uh, through innovative uh, machine learning uh, frameworks such as artificial intelligence, or the use of um, air system modeling uh, system approaches. So uh, we understand that this is uh, quite challenging. These these um, uh, these concepts building on such a complex technology stack can be um, uh, difficult. Uh, but uh, we are um, pretty sure that uh, some mature uh, ideas uh, exist, and uh, we welcome these kinds of submissions. However, we also welcome. Uh, ideas that are uh, not yet fully uh, operationalized, but can be proven as a technological, uh, technologically feasible. Uh, so we will have an, a team of experts that will evaluate the proposals, and um, uh, we would be uh, ready to to uh, look at the proposals and um, uh, entertain those proposals that um, uh, really bring us uh, proof of concepts that can be brought to scale, but not maybe not yet fully operational at scalable just yet. 
Thank you, Anna. So you really mentioned that in the Copernicus Masters, but of course also in the Galileo Masters, we do have different challenges. ESA challenge in that case is looking for more mature ideas, but the university challenge that Mr. Rudolph quickly introduced to us um, is one where you can also apply with just an idea at an early stage. Um, maybe, Mr. Rudolph, you would like to uh, tell us a little bit more about the partners in the University Challenge. Yeah, yes. This year, for the second time, we cooperate with the Munich Business School uh, and for the first time with Alpha Build. Uh, this is a company builder here in, in Munich and they have a strong uh, cooperation with the Munich Business School and the idea is that we support students and researchers um, at the Munich Business School to uh, create business plans, to uh, define the teams, the startup teams, but also to, um, yeah, to, and finally to launch a company at the end of this process. So we decided to, to cooperate with, with both uh, institutions. And I believe the, uh, the benefit here is that the Munich Business School has a strong international network with uh, universities all over the world. So this is also a global challenge in the meantime. And uh, we believe that this kind of uh, service uh, being offered by Alphabet can really uh, help uh, students uh, to be quicker and um, really to, to, to make their ideas reality and uh, to start their own business. So this is the idea behind the University Challenge this year in the Copernicus and the Galileo Masters. Thank you, Thorsten. As a founding partner of the Copernicus Masters, what would be your recommendations for the first time as an applicant to the DLR Challenge, Gunther? You are still muted. Do you? Ah, now we now I hear you. <laughs> Gunda, it seems there's a tech. I heard you just for a tiny second, and but then you were gone again. There's still some audio problems. Can we? Now somebody has unmuted me. You hear me? Yes. Now we hear you. <laughs> okay, the background Thank fairies you. helped. <laughs> yeah. So I repeat. Um, as I have mentioned already, don't be afraid as an applicant uh, to the DLR price, don't be afraid if you have not yet uh, fully developed business plans. Some of our previous winners uh, didn't have this kind of business plan, but they developed an application and they developed uh, a business uh, in the course of, of their uh, further development. Um, we are a kind of scientific and academic institution, DLR, so it's our duty and not to start with business, but to be in the preface of business and to support uh, businesses, startups and new space companies. So uh, don't be afraid that our themes, again, as I mentioned, human health and environment is not necessarily a topic where you can make big money, big money from the very beginning. Uh, but maybe your idea can also help to have a better governance, to have uh, better environmental care by government and, and government institutions. Uh, so, um, again, don't be afraid to apply if you have not yet started a business or even if you think uh, maybe it's not good for a business, but the idea is brilliant for the themes environment and health. Thank you, Gunther, for that introduction. Maybe um, a follow-up question, as I know that in our next panel, there is someone that you know very well, a winner of yours from two years ago. Um, maybe you could quickly let us know how you supported uh, Ayuma after their success winning the DLR challenge. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know who will speak from uh, Ayuma, but uh, I think Julian will, uh, will tell you that uh, he um, he made a better part of his career at DLR, so some of his ideas and background is team from our German Remote Sensing Data Center at DLR, and this is fine, and we are very much supporting him, and we are happy that we see Ajuma now as a rising star of uh, new sports and health gadgets to come up uh, with a presence in the press and elsewhere in TB. Uh, so we are very happy and very proud that we have supported uh, Ajuma and will support Ajuma and that Ajuma was one of the winners in, in two years ago. 
And we have to say that. Also, you hear me just now. Thorsten? You hear me? We do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I only want to say, uh, Günther, that uh, uh, the Ajuma was also part of the ESA Business Incubation Center here in Oberfaffenhofen. So yeah. they, they only jumped over the uh, uh, frontier and, and, and got access to the big for, for, for the first two years. So uh, I only want to say that this is always a, a good combination uh, to work as a research scientist at DLR and then to start with your own company. At the ESA Big here in Bavaria, um, we have seen so much uh, startups uh, uh, in the last years. Uh, former employees of DRR who really started their own companies, and there are a lot of wonderful examples. And Ajuma is also one of them. Correct. I oh, can agree. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rudolf. And there's a question from the audience exactly for you. Um, so, will the business then be created under German law or is there a possibility to locate some business somewhere else? I you, didn't hear that. Yeah. Sorry. You didn't hear the question? Oh, I'm sorry again. I will repeat it. The, the business will the business then be created under the German law, or is there a possibility to locate the business somewhere else? Yeah, normally uh, we are looking for yeah, students who live here in in Germany or in Europe, um, but they also can come from 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 abroad. So it's there's not um, yeah it's not um, needed that somebody is really uh, a European citizen. But he has to live here in in, uh, in in Europe, so he can take part in this university ch challenge, and later on also can benefit from the ESA Big program. So this is really open, um, an open program, and yeah, uh, students uh, from all over the world are welcome uh, to take part. That's correct, indeed. The competitions are open to any participant globally. And especially for the universities, um, you can join from anywhere in the world. And of course, um, your business that uh, uh, you will eventually create uh, doesn't have to be in Germany in the end. Um, but this is something that is under discussion, of course, with the partner then um, that if you, if you win the prize. I've seen that there's another question for Gunther. Um, I will just read it out. So how technical uh, does your solution need to be and uh, also the business plan uh, yeah for the technicality um, our jury of course uh, comprises um, not only dlr experts uh, but also external experts from various domains uh, some from the techniques of course we will have a look whether this will work in the instance if you say you're going to use central data to monitor uh, small insects with uh, centimeters, we would say this would not be possible, at least not directly. Um, however, we have uh, had already a prize for bee uh, caretaking, uh, but in another context. Uh, so we, of course, check the technical and physical parameters. You don't need to go into much detail, but um, we don't need a scientific or technical paper, but the concept should be workable. Um, and this, of course, we are checking. Same with the business plan. Uh, we are not a venture capital company uh, asking you to make a due diligence, but uh, the sketches, what you think there would be an area and what would be your competitors, uh, what would be your marketplace, this is enough. Uh, the form sheet doesn't allow anyhow to give more details. Thank you, Gunther. There's um, another general question which I would like to read out as it might interest uh, more than just one person. Um, can you and is it advisable to send in more than two unrelated ideas? Yes, so if you are a genius and if you do have more than one innovative solution that you can propose, feel free to do so. Um, there are no limitations how many ideas you submit to the Copernicus or Galileo Masters. Then let me quickly check if there's another one. Yeah, this was actually the same question, so I hope that uh, this is answered now. Um, thank you, Gunther, Anna, and uh, Thorsten for joining our panel. 
our Q&A session with uh, our participants. And um, then we go to the next uh, panel that I already mentioned <laughs> during our Q&A. Um, so we will have Annette Bart, co-founder and CEO uh, with us from Ajuma. Um, she won the DLR challenge of Copernicus Masters in 2019. We have uh, Lukas Brachel from Drone Tech. He's co-founder and CEO and won the Galileo Prize, the Czech Republic in uh, 2019 as well. And um, we have Thomas Jelle from MazeMap. He's the co-founder and CEO, and they won the Galileo Masters in 2015 uh, for, in, uh, for the Galileo Prize in Norway. And I see that Annette is joining with her husband as well. So please welcome Julian. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Nice to be here. Thank you. Good to see you all again. Last time that we celebrated was in Helsinki. <laughs> Physical event and life. <laughs> so let's quickly dive into the question. Anita, maybe uh, you can tell us a little bit uh, of what has happened since uh, the success in 2019. You have been all over the news in the past two, three weeks. And um, yeah, I think you have a lot to tell. Yeah, the, the last few weeks have been really, really exciting for us. Um, so after winning the DLR Health Challenge, actually that's uh, where everything really, really started. So we kind of finalized our idea, which is the UV Bodyguard. And this year was really, really interesting for us because in February we won uh, the ISPO um, brand, brand new. new award. Uh, which is uh, for one of the top 10 newcomers in the sports startup business. And actually, pretty much a week ago, we were part of a German version of Shark Tank, which is Hürde der Löwen. And since then, actually, things have been going crazy. So we had a lot of press coverage and we had so much more orders from customers than we expected. So it's a very well, demanding time at the same time right now. Imagine. <laughs> Could you tell us um, in like one or two sentences what your original solution was and what product you are selling? Because maybe there are some of our participants listening today that don't know what, what you developed. Yes, our idea is the, the UV bodyguard. And the idea is um, be safe in the sun, be smart in the sun. Julian is showing that uh, product right now. That's why we also have the sun behind us, actually. And the, it's a little variable that's connected to your smartphone and that tells you in real time how strong the sun is at the moment at your location and how long you can still stay in the sun. And the special thing which we uh, developed is a combination of uh, UV measurement and satellite data. Uh, Julian will say a few sentences about that in a moment. And um, basically, the idea is to have a consumer product that helps uh, consumer reduce their level of sunburn or avoid sunburn at all and reduce also the risk of developing skin cancer. And it's also to monitor your vitamin D level. So, Basically, it's about finding the right and healthy amount of sun. Maybe Julian can say a few words about uh, satellite data, which we are using. So this, this is uh, a UV sensor, uh, which measure, measures the incoming UV radiation. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, in order to really constrain uh, the, the um, uh, let's say the, the spectral intensity, which is really harmful for, the, for your skin, uh, we need also additional information. We, we gather the, the broadband UV information from the sensor, which is also which is already measuring in the right uh, frequency range. But nevertheless, we have to constrain uh, these uh, these observations uh, made by the sensor with um, information about the sun, the solar elevation at that given moment, and also uh, about the the amount of ozone overhead of you, because this is also strongly influencing the UVB radiation. And the UV, uh, the, the, the ozone information we get from the Copernicus uh, Atmosphere Monitoring Service. So we have a direct link in each measurement, which is um, obtained with our UV bodyguard, 
um, is then constrained with atmospheric conditions, uh, which is provided by Copernicus. Thank you, Julian and Danette, for this. Um, maybe you do have a recommendation for future DLR challenge particip participants, um, how to become so successful. Well, it's, it's a mixture of trying to uh, grab the attention you get at some point, like uh, using competitions to get more attention, also using the network from DLR and ATSO in order to really spread the word. So that's the, really the first and essential step you have to take uh, in order to, uh, well, find your customers actually, because I think that's uh, probably the biggest challenge. Even if you have a great idea, if nobody will know about it, then you have basically no chances. Because if you try to reach that public attention by spending money on, let's say in our case, social media, it's almost impossible for a startup to really have such a large amount of money just for marketing expense. Thank you for this, Danette. Lucas, maybe you also can uh, tell us in a few sentences what, uh, with what solutions you, uh, solution you actually won, what Rontech is, what you developed, and what has happened since 2019. Yeah, thanks, Ines, for the work. Uh, we basically develop an IoT device and software platform that helps to coordinate drones in the airspace. So they basically know about each other so they can operate safely and they don't endanger the manned aviation like the airplanes. So this is the solution which we submitted for the Galileo Masters, and we won the main EGNSS incubation prize in 2019. So last time we met, it was in Helsinki, December. And since that time, we, we finalized the product, which is now being put on the market. We should be on the market in like two months or so. And uh, of course, we have received a great media attention that we haven't dreamed before, before the winning. And we also got a lot of credibility, which help us to create new partnerships. And yeah, lastly, the financial aid we received was really helpful. This is really good to hear. And I really miss the times when we had our physical meetings and um, yeah, could celebrate together. <laughs> Lucas, you mentioned the EGNSS Accelerator. Um, you were one of the lucky ones that won this additional prize in 2019. Did this, um, was this another boost uh, and especially good for the development of your idea? I think you were incubated with Anissa Big as well. Yeah, you... sure. So uh, when we uh, when we won the competition, we were already incubated by Isabic Prague, uh, but uh, of course we were lacking additional funds for finding the hardware development, which is really demanding concerning the funding. Uh, so since we got lucky and we won the additional EGNSS, this brought an additional sixty two thousand euro funding. Therefore, we were able to postpone some uh, VC fundraising and fund the hardware development from EGNSS. So it was really great so that we didn't have to put uh, equity to investors before the product is on the market. And we were able to fund this from these resources. That is really great to hear. I have a question from the audience, um, and since I hear that uh, Annette and Julian's product is already on market, and Lucas, yours will be soon, um, where can they buy your products? Maybe Annette and Julian, you want to start? Yes, in our case, it's either via our own website, online shop, or via big retailers such as Globetrotter, which is like famous for sports equipment. Thank you, Lucas. Well, we don't, we didn't have uh, the eShop yet, so we are distributing our testing prototypes among our partners. But uh, when the product is ready, uh, there will be eShop, which will be our source, 
and we are also discussing with distributors and resellers which will be the main contact point with the customer thank you and now let's jump to thomas um you won the galileo masters in 2015 which is quite some time ago now. I haven't even been at AZO at that time, so it's the first time that the two of us meet. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about what MazeMap is and what, what, you're, what you developed? Certainly, I can. Um, and thanks for bringing me in. Uh, and congrats to Anat and Lucas with the, their success so far. Uh, impressive to hear. So uh, what MazeMap uh, is doing, we're helping people find their ways around large uh, campuses, such as uh, universities, large corporate offices or, or hospitals. Uh, so it's a combination of indoor and outdoor navigation, uh, helping people find their ways to the last mile, uh, basically. So uh, we started off, uh, it's, uh, uh, I think we founded a company back in uh, late or almost 2014 uh, and like uh, as you can imagine the last year has where campuses and offices has been closed there's been a uh, lower demand for our service uh, but before that we helped uh, roughly 2 million users uh, every single month uh, and uh, uh, we expect that once we hit the end of the pandemic now we'll, we'll be able to double that uh, next year. Wow. I can only say that you are definitely the longest and biggest uh, player in this panel, at least. <laughs> Do you have any recommendations for participants to Galileo Masters or as well Copernicus Masters? Uh, I think the uh, kind of uh, advice or recommendation would be uh, always try to find uh, your, your first and right customers, uh, as also uh, the others uh, mentioned uh, early on. Uh, and build the success and then take it stepwise, right? Because you're not able to build success uh, overnight. So it's, it do takes time, right? Uh, and for us, uh, we've partnered with, uh, so one of our largest partners is a company called Cisco. Uh, and I think uh, maybe most of the participants have heard of that. So, um, uh, so they're the global market leader in, in um, uh, yeah, uh, network equipment and uh, quite a few uh, ICT services. and. Uh, so just uh, before Christmas last year, we were actually uh, made it to the process where you can uh, purchase MaceMap on their global price list. So uh, and just to give you a perspective, that's there's Cisco has around 100,000 partners and, and roughly 100 where you can purchase directly with Cisco. So, uh, but the way we built is kind of customer by customer, success by success, right? Uh, and uh, um, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, it takes uh, it takes a long uh, it's a long journey and it's a lot of hard work uh, and it's especially hard in the in the first uh, years, right? Um, uh, but you just gotta be able to tune in, find uh, right partners that can give you trust and credibility and, and the right customers to grow with. Uh, and if you're able to do that and prove success uh, with them, then investors and everything else will come along, right? So. We are now in a fortunate situation where we get approached by investors every single week, right? Uh, they want to invest and yeah. Um, we were not in that stage like uh, four or five years ago, um, far from it. So you gotta have the patience to, to, to stick in. So it's courage, it's patience. Uh, it's a lot of, um, yeah, finding investors, uh, to, to actually fund your idea. Um, I do have a question from the audience as well. Um, thank you for the formidable input. Um, it was possible to finance the idea with the price. So um, I think this is related to the, the price that you actually received from the partner. Was it a cash price? Was it uh, more in kind? What did you What did you actually prefer more? What helped more? Was it the cash or the in kind? Maybe Thomas, you can you can start. Uh, indeed. Uh, so uh, what we received was a a, a combination of uh, cash and uh, contribution from uh, Innovation Norway as well, uh, in, in Norway, which is helping. And what we did with that uh, price, we uh, set up and established an office in the US. Uh, so uh, uh, basically that has uh, helped us uh, quite a bit uh, because uh, yeah, the US market is one of the larger markets, uh, as, as I guess all of you know, right? 
So for us, that was a, a big stepping stone. And at the point in time, we didn't have that much uh, cash and revenue. Uh, so in, in that point in time, that was uh, important to us. So, so that's what we did with it. And today we're, uh, we're, we're in quite a few um, Fortune 100 uh, customers uh, in the US. So that's, that's been successful. Thank you, Thomas. Um, Lucas. Yeah, for me, it was the definitely cash because uh, since we were self-funded from the beginning and we already been part of the ISABIC Prague, which has helped with some mentoring activities, uh, it was really about the cash because, yeah, you know, the hardware development is really demanding. You have to still buy some new parts, build prototypes, and you iterate this like 20 times until you reach your right and uh, flawless product. So definitely the cash helped us a lot. Annette and Julian, how was it for you? Yeah, for, for us, it was a kind of a combination. Uh, on the one hand side, it was really the cash because we were self-funded more or less. And uh, is a big, uh, there is a big contribution. And also the, the, um, uh, the, our winning from the, uh, of the Copernicus Master really helped us uh, to overcome the first period of, of our business uh, but also the uh, we also very appreciated um, let's say the um, the help we received from the Copernicus accelerator um, which was some kind of consultancy and um, also the network the big network we, we saw there so it's it's a combination it's a combination between money on the one hand side the network and also consultancy There is another question from the audience um, to you, Thomas. How long did it take for a, uh, for a POC and did you have one when you entered the Copernicus Galileo Masters? Really good question. Uh, yes, uh, we already had a POC when we entered the competition. Uh, so I guess the first POC, uh, and I wasn't very proud when we launched the first POC because uh, we could, uh, as as the other founders of uh, and Lucas in particular has, has mentioned, right? We uh, we bootstrapped right uh, before we got our product uh, to that stage. So uh, we had a budget. We were able to secure a customer, uh, and I was willing to kind of uh, yeah uh, take a bet on us, right? Uh, and uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the budget only, uh, well, we wanted to do 10 things. We only were able to do two or three, uh, but still we launched the product uh, and got uh, quite reasonable uh, results within two or three months, I'd say. Uh, so, um, uh, we, so basically what happened was uh, we wanted designers to be able to design the front end application how the user flow would would work uh, but we couldn't afford that so there was uh, kind of back end engineers that that did uh, the design of the application and um, yeah uh, uh, i wouldn't recommend that if you if you don't have to but that was our uh, the only opportunity we had back then uh, so uh, but uh, after we launched with the first customer we peaked for around 1000 users uh, a day and then we kind of saw that okay here we're really hit something even with a poor design with a poor uh, product uh, we're still able to to yeah uh, make a uh, difference perfect thank you very much to the three of you uh, for joining today for giving our participants a little bit of an insight in what your challenges uh, were what copernicus and galileo masses gave you after after joining and winning the competition and um, as far as i hear the undertone in what all of you have said it is really um, the platform that we are offering and the marketing that you that you get and um, the outreach to our partners which is of course globally so uh, the, the perfect first step on on the journey thank you again for joining so what you definitely do as a winner of the competition is shine, <laughs> as you can see. In the framework of our Space Awards that are traditionally taking place in line with the European Space Week, you not only get the recognition by your partner, but you also get awarded on stage in front of the most important global space stakeholders. We therefore would like to encourage you to develop to shine with um, our former winners that you just heard.
The European Commission is also one of the oldest partners in the competitions and they are involved in many different ways. We already heard from uh, Ms. Cavada that Martina Sindela, policy officer in the DG DEFIS, will now explain to you the European Commission's role as a challenge partner in the Copernicus Masters and their very own topic-specific challenges in this year. Welcome, Martina. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello, Ines, and uh, good morning to, to all of you. Yes, again, it's, uh, it's a real pleasure for me to be part of this year's uh, new competition. Um, as uh, our director, Mrs. Kawada, had already well explained, um, the selection and the definition of our two challenges uh, this year are really put um, at the heart of uh, two really major, major policy objectives and initiatives. It's on one hand um, the Green Deal, and on the other hand, it's um, Horizon Europe, the new big uh, framework, uh, research framework um, program of the Commission. Um, let me start with uh, the first um, challenge, space for infrastructure and building um, monitoring. Um, at a first sight, it might not look obvious that this is an issue for the Commission. But uh, in fact, um, these, this area has very important environmental, economic, but also human um, impacts. Why? Um, we can observe in Europe, but uh, more or less all over the world, that uh, big infrastructures like uh, bridges, um, big uh, construction, uh, construction buildings, um, are deteriorating due to, to climate and uh, material damages. And very often these damages are not seen in time, but just recognized when there are major accidents and uh, even very often environmental catastrophes. So we thought, uh, after discussions with many colleagues in, in the Commission, uh, to define this challenge um, replies also to quite a number of um, initiatives in the new uh, Horizon Europe um, research program. And we would like to, to encourage um, many starts up to uh, think about participating in particular in this uh, challenge. We encourage you um, to use Copernicus data and Galileo uh, Agnos data because we think this is the perfect area where you can use both uh, European big data sources. Of course, also the use of artificial intelligence, um, data mining, uh, cloud uh, infrastructure, all this is, uh, is encouraged. The second uh, challenge is space for smart mobility. And this is certainly immediately obvious that smart mobility is at the heart of the Green Deal and uh, the implementation of the Green Deal objectives. Um, with this challenge, we would like to, to get very application, very user, even market-oriented uh, solutions. Again, it is defined in a way that uh, Earth observation and the navigation data can and should be, be used. Of course, please also use all the technology uh, available. And we are really looking forward to get uh, as interesting uh, proposals as during the last uh, years. And uh, we are really um, committed to take uh, ideas, even not everyone can win, uh, to take ideas up and bring them in um, the internal discussions within the Commission. Um, in all the different um, inter-service groups for Horizon Europe, but also for, for the Green Deal. So um, I'm really looking forward uh, for, for your proposals and thanks again, Ines. Thank you, Martina. 
There's just one last slide uh, regarding the price pool for your challenges. So maybe I just say a few words on it. Um, for both of the commission challenges, there is a cash price in uh, it's 10,000 10, K and you have the chance to access um, data, uh, which is also worth 10,000 K. As we already heard from Rodrigo da Costa in the beginning, the USPA of former GSA is involved in four challenges this year. As this is uh, quite uh, a lot, uh, I'm happy that we have Wojtek Ford today with us, who can give us a little bit more of details on the specific challenges. So please uh, welcome Wojtek. Thank you very much, Ines. I hope you can uh, hear me well. So as already mentioned a uh, number of times uh, today, this is actually the first day uh, of us to uh, be a USPA, so European Union Agency for a Space Program. Um, there have been a lot of set, uh, so I will not go into detail, but I'm very glad uh, that we can already uh, present uh, our prizes under this umbrella uh, today. And uh, as uh, last year, also this year, we would like to dedicate our main challenges to next generations. Because we want to focus on aspects of our life for our children, where Galo can play an important role for the environment that uh, we live in, the health and also environment of uh, entertainment of the next generations. And the reason for that is uh, because we want to, we were so um, excited about the applications that we got last year. Uh, there were so many very good ones, but we had to choose, you know, just some of the winners. So we understood that these topics really resonate with the innovators and people that apply over there. So that's why we want to continue with uh, this topic. And uh, as anticipated, uh, there is also a fourth prize, which I will explain um, very soon. So on the next slide, uh, you will see our first challenge. And uh, that is the EUSPA Space for Planet Challenge. Uh, so there we want to appreciate the new uh, solutions using the Galileo, Agnos, or Copernicus, uh, which are helping to overcome one of the greatest challenges uh, for us that we're having today, and that is uh, to overcome the climate change and the environmental degradation. And uh, under this, uh, this prize, uh, we can imagine, I would say, a number of uh, topics uh, so for sure, uh, we believe that the ideas in this challenge can uh, support sustainable and smart mobility. Um, so in general, the transport, which is enabled by uh, European uh, GNSS, European navigation. Then the ideas can also contribute to the farm to fork strategy of uh, European Union and uh, also to support the zero pollution ambition uh, that we having. And that also includes the damage from floods or other natural hazards. So I think uh, this is quite a big range of potential of innovation where um, people and innovators and companies can apply uh, within this challenge. Uh, the second challenge, uh, that uh, I would like to mention uh, is uh, on next slide and is uh, space for fun. And uh, here, of course, we don't want to be uh, so serious. Uh, we want uh, our kids and future generations to have also a little bit of fun uh, because our children enjoy the time most when they are having uh, fun at the end, not when we are protecting them. But in general, uh, we believe that the gaming and leisure markets are constantly growing and becoming an important part of our lives uh, with uh, huge revenues. So we see also a lot of business opportunities uh, over there. So the ideas proposed within this challenge should uh, focus on development of applications 
introducing space data in the areas of uh, gaming, sport, uh, leisure, but also uh, tourism. And uh, I would like to encourage you here to also use uh, another uh, technologies in combination uh, with uh, European GNSS and Copernicus. And that is the augmented reality, uh, which is uh, also, let's say, helping uh, for the reality games to be even more immersive and also the artificial intelligence. Because in general, uh, what we see is that the innovation is not coming from using uh, only one technology, as you can see in the applications, but in the combination of uh, more technologies to come with new innovative uh, idea. The third challenge uh, of EUSPA is space for being safe and uh, healthy. And uh, as already said today, uh, unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic is uh, still with us. It's uh, still the topic. And we believe that uh, the Galileo Agnos and Copernicus can uh, bring uh, further new applications which will help uh, to tackle uh, these situations, especially to monitor and analyze uh, emergency situations like the pandemic and to increase the awareness among the citizens. So this prize is of course dedicated to the pandemic, but uh, for safe and healthy life in general. So it's uh, more broad because at the end, we this is what we care when we think about next generation is uh, primarily the health. And as anticipated, uh, today I have a small surprise because there is a fourth challenge which uh, we didn't publish yet, and that is the EUSPA SATCOM challenge. And uh, there we want to focus on uh, secure connectivity, which is a new fast developing area combining, uh, you know, we can combine the position information uh, from Galileo and EGNOS with uh, satellite communication. As I said earlier, you can combine the technologies uh, with another sensors, uh, but we wanted to highlight satellite communication because we believe that there is extra space for, for innovation of uh, using those. Because satellite communication can bring uh, essential services such as the telecommunication, broadcasting services, and the data communication, very importantly. Uh, to users anywhere on Earth, uh, even where the terrestrial means are unavailable. And this can be combined, we believe, very nicely uh, with uh, GNSS. And uh, the areas I can give, ex we want to keep it very open, but the, the, let's say, examples or areas that I would like to especially highlight today is uh, transport. Uh, that includes uh, drones, which uh, very often are using uh, satellite communication uh, as a command and control, for example, uh, but also sending their position when testing the operation uh, beyond the line of sight. Also, uh, maritime, where the, the connection, the classical connection is not always available, and uh, autonomous, uh, autonomous driving, which is a big uh, upcoming topic, and uh, there the connection is uh, also uh, crucial. Uh, another area would be Internet of Things, so the low data rate applications uh, where the satellite communication is uh, very useful, and uh, many others such as the critical infrastructure uh, monitoring. Uh, then of course uh, the crisis management is a, is a big topic. Uh, where uh, satellite communication can play a big role uh, together with uh, Galo, Agnos, uh, Opcor, Copernicus. So I hope that you like uh, these challenges. I'm, uh, I'm very excited about them. And uh, I was also very happy to hear today what kind of influence uh, the, the prizes have uh, for the winners to their life and to the businesses. So I really want to encourage you 
that in case you think that uh, your idea might not be the best or you don't have uh, you know all the puzzles together to to apply and to be the winner uh, try anyway we're really looking forward to read your ideas to give you feedback and at the end of the day if you try it will not cost you anything so please apply and um, we're looking forward to read your applications thank you Ah, and I forgot to, to mention that uh, each of the prizes uh, today, uh, the winners will get the, the prize worth uh, 10,000 euro. Thank you very much. And uh, back to you, Ines. I'm looking forward for the discussion. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, thank you, Wojtek. I see already in our chat there are some questions, but um, we keep them for a little bit later. Um, I assume that with so much input, there must be questions uh, as well coming uh, in uh, also in our next um, presentation. So let us welcome Robert Klaner and Timo Hoffmann introducing uh, us the VMVI and DLR challenge. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Hello. Um, hi. Uh, well, together with my dear colleague Robert Klana from the DLR, I have the pleasure to introduce you to the new DLR BMBI challenge. And uh, first of all, my colleague Robert Klana is in charge of the technology marking at the German Aerospace Center. We call it DLR, the German approbation. DLR um, undertakes stationary tasks in the space sector and represents the Federal Republic of Germany in several international bodies. And we consider the DLR the driver of techni technical engineering in aviation and in the space sector in Germany and the link between business, SMEs, uh, politics, uh, policy making, if you so want to call it. and uh, yeah the the general development in that particular area um, i'm representing the german competent prs authority um, to say a few words about uh, the prs the public re regulated service is uh, well a more uh, robust and resilient uh, service of galileo and um, the added value is that it is um, uh, more uh, robust against jamming and spoofing and um, therefore of uh, great interest for users and applications uh, that have to rely on the integrity of uh, the received position and timing signals, like for example, um, emergency services and critical infrastructures. Um, of course, it's our goal to promote the use of the PRS and um, see innovators take advantage of the particular distinctive features of the PRS, but uh, our common uh, DLR BMVI challenge um, addresses the broader audience and um, that's something that Robert will uh, tell you about now. Thank you. Um, Ines, could you please skip the slide? Maybe Timo, you could say a few words about the challenge itself. Timo? Pardon, I, I, just I, I couldn't you to, yeah. <laughs> hear your introduction, uh, Robert, the, the last words. Um, yeah, we we are looking for some, um, yeah, for some solutions um, regarding high accuracy, cybersecurity and safety, uh, kind of explains itself. Um, there are several new services uh, that, uh, that provide some added, added value. Uh, regarding these particular objects and um, yeah we are looking for solutions um, for example that enable automation and um, autonomy with reliable position navigation and timing and um, well taking um, taking uh, advantage of these um, this particular features uh, would be something that we would uh, um, 
particularly appreciate when we are um, evaluating your ideas. So then I'd like to give the word to Robert. Thank you. Thank you very much for the handover. Um, next slide, please, Ines. So welcome also from my side, uh, Robert Klarner from the um, DLR, German Aerospace Center Tech Transfer in Oberpfaffenhofen, next door to AZO. Um, what are the key application fields we would like to push with our joint price? So it's, it's all about solutions which are core for the next big things in the mobile world, like especially driverless cars, like unmanned ships, like automatic flying and precise landing, like unpiloted airplanes, like taxis, um, like fully autonomous UAVs, like self-controlled robots, uh, industrial process automation, and last but never least, like time synchronization, and even many more. So all these topics are about technologies, for sure, um, but it's also about a new way to operate systems on land, sea, and in the air, and therefore about boosting future progress for us all. Next slide, please. So let me point out once again, this is the first time that DLR and BMVI join forces. And uh, the good news is we also join our prices. So um, with our offering, we really want to create a double winner who will raise a contribution in kind and in cash for his idea. So what else do you need more to execute your idea to foster your success? Um, let me conclude. For the next level, navigation, you get five man months, a voucher for assistance, for support from the DLR to um, carry on with your idea, to validate it, to further develop the technology, uh, to prove the principle and so on. And you get a cash prize from the BMVI of 5,000 euros um, money. So I think this is a very good and strong combination, but of course, all starts with bright ideas. So I would say you can count on us together and we count on you to participate. And um, maybe the last slide, you can see the contacts. And um, yeah, you have now um, uh, a good time period until mid of July to elaborate and insert your idea. And if you have questions, if you need more details, you have a fruitful mama, papa situation now, whom to address, um, BMVI or DLR or of both. We're looking forward to your ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you to both of you. The contacts were indeed in the beginning, so I switched back to the first slide. Uh, so our participants already um, see both of your contacts. <laughs> Thanks for the presentation. And um, I will also see you both, hopefully both in a minute. I just heard that uh, Timo, you will probably have to leave at 12.30. So I hope that uh, we still have both of you. Otherwise, it will only be so bad as I, as I heard. Our next speaker was already uh, shortly um, visible on the screen. Um, this is uh, Juan Alaba from Portugal Space um, with their very own uh, challenge in Copernicus Masters, but um, they do not only join as a challenge partner, um, they also have two prizes, um, one Copernicus Prize uh, uh, Azores and one uh, Galileo Prize Portugal. So I'm happy to, uh, yeah, Give the word to you, Juan, and um, learn a little bit more about, about your contribution to the competitions this year for the first time. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ines. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, actually this year we are you delighted. You seem to be still muted? No? It's fine, sorry, my mistake. Can you, can you hear me now? Can you confirm, please, that you can hear me? No? Ines? Yes. Can can you hear me? Now I now I hear you. <laughs> I I had okay. problems on my own. <laughs> no, okay. But we hear oh, you. Yes, it's perfect. Thank no. you. 
So, so thank you for the introduction. Uh, yes, indeed, this year we are delighted to announce uh, the first prizes uh, ever in Portugal, not only the challenge that we'll talk about now, but also the regional prizes that you mentioned, the um, regional prize uh, Azores for Copernicus and regional prize Portugal for Galileo. And uh, actually, uh, for us, it's very important um, to participate here because in the past we have seen Portuguese companies uh, participating in different prizes and we thought it made all sense for us also to have our own prizes. So my name is Joana Labar, I'm the National Relations and Projects Officer at Portugal Space, the Portuguese Space Agency. And Ines, if you could put the next slide. Please. Yes. And for those of you that uh, don't know much about uh, the space uh, ecosystem in Portugal, uh, well, Portugal is quite active uh, in space lately. Uh, and actually, uh, the Portuguese Space Agency, Portugal Space, was created two years ago in 2019 in order to implement the national strategy for space and update it. We also uh, define industrial policy and uh, a very important part is that we represent the Portuguese ecosystem at the different organizations such as the European Space Agency, the European Commission, but not only that, we also represent Portugal at astronomical uh, organizations such as ESO SKA. And then a very important part here is that we have a very strong focus in Portugal in new space and in supporting startups and entrepreneurs. So that's the idea and the reason why uh, we want to have these prizes uh, this year. In Portugal, our strategy, our, our space strategy, is very much focused on uh, the Atlantic and also on the development of downstream applications for the benefit of society, right? And then if you could go to the next slide, I will explain why we have the prize and what we are looking for. Uh, so this year, we want to have the Portugal Space Atlantic Challenge. And with it, we are looking for ideas, how to use Copernicus data, but not only for ocean and coastal applications. What are we looking for? We are looking for ideas that are aligned with the European Green Deal and digital agendas. That's very important for us. But we are also looking for ideas that not only use Copernicus, which is a must, but that they also try to integrate other space components, such as EGNSS, satellite communications, and for us also quite important, very high resolution imagery. So what are we looking for? We are looking both for uh, technically sound ideas, so excellence in terms of uh, technical aspects, but also for a strong business case. We also want to foster commercial applications and the development of self-sustainable uh, startups. So we are looking for both parts here, right? Um, next slide, please. And what are we offering? Um, and this year, what we would like to offer, it's a cash prize of 10,000 euros to be spent developing the idea in Portugal. But also we think that uh, visibility is very important to the winner and then we will invite the winner to participate at the all atlantic and new space atlantic summits in 2022 these are the summits that portugal space organized the new space atlantic summit and dear center a partner from our prize also organizes and we believe that this will provide a lot of visibility then uh, we will invite and support the the IPN uh, to apply to SAP. Of course, this depends on the approval of your application in Portugal. And then uh, we will help you networking uh, across different countries and across different continents throughout the network that the DEAR Center has. And last but not least, uh, similar with other prices, the European Commission also will um, provide you access to 10,000 euros of uh, commercial data sets. So this is the idea. The message here is that even if your idea is not too mature, you can also apply. We are looking not only, of course, for Portuguese companies or, or individuals, we are looking for European ideas. And if you do not know if you could apply or not, we encourage you to do so. And if you have some doubts, please reach out to us and uh, my contacts are all also available. Thank you very much. And we are looking forward to, to hearing from you. Thank you, Juan. And um, please bear with me with your camera on as we start our Q&A session now. I would like to invite our other partners in as well. So, um, Timo, if you're still there, Hubert, Martina, Wojtek, 
So as soon as I see you all, we can go ahead. Martina, do I see Martina already? Do I hear you at least? Martina seems to be off. Well, in that case, um, we already have a question from the audience and, and it's anyway, ah, there she is. <laughs> uh, and it's anyway addressed to Wojtek. So um, let's jump in right there. Uh, the question from the audience is how developed should the idea be to apply? So I see that um, throughout this whole uh, event that we are hosting, this is a question that comes up uh, more often. And you always say that please also apply with even a not so developed idea is it the same case for the GSA or use by challenges now? Yes, thank you, Ines. Uh, yes, I would say it is uh, the same for use by challenges. So it is, of course, uh, good uh, if uh, you have already some proof of concept uh, or prototype. However, we take in also uh, the concept just on the level of idea. So don't be afraid to apply it also on this level. Thank you. Um, could you share with our potential participant out there what is the recipe for a successful uh, application to the especially new subcom challenge? Yes, so uh, I would uh, say that first, uh, please check what is the state of the art uh, on the market. Uh, what are the ideas out there? and uh, how your idea and your uh, solution fits in if it's not already done. And uh, second thing I would like to highlight is uh, also that you need to know what solutions, uh, what problem are you solving with your solution. Uh, this is also very important to describe because sometimes it's nice to have a new technological application, but you also need to have uh, uh, let's say problem that you're solving so that people are interested to uh, to buy it uh, from you and uh, regarding the satellite communication price um, we wanted to highlight the satellite communication because we believe that uh, there is still a lot of space uh, for for improvement uh, so at the same time i would invite the applicants to uh, to see what has been done and what are the opportunities for satellite communication and how this can be uh, combined uh, with uh, positioning. Thank you, Wojtek, for this answer. Um, Timo and Robert. Timo left us, I think. I don't see his uh, picture anymore. So, Robert, you will have to answer this question. <laughs> Um, the core asset and major driver of automation and autonomy is the precise, reliable and robust nav navigation. Could you please elaborate a bit more on of yeah. your own area of interest, what your area of interest is, namely, of course, also cybersecurity, resilient positioning, navigation and timing for critical infrastructure? Um. You mentioned a few, um, let's say, uh, use cases we were addressing. Of course, um, the technology, the methods behind, they can be generic. So I would say, okay, um, if you have a positioning which is really reliable, which is safe against and secure against um, uh, jamming, spoofing, mechaning, um, which also uses the new services which are now upcoming, now upcoming with Galileo, they are not already um, existing for a longer time, but they um, offer new opportunities. If you use these methods, you can just apply this in, in many of these, uh, let's say, um, areas of transport, of mobility, but also of infrastructure. Um, and we, we all know, we, we have the feeling, but we also see these threats, like the pipeline threat last week in the US. Um, the, the infrastructure is vulnerable and we, we have to make this secure to, to live our lives and this goes via technology and we think um, Galileo and especially these new services they provide a perfect way uh, to harden these um, infrastructures, these systems against threats from outside but there also might be threats which are not intended 
which come from nature, from the environment, but they also can disturb um, like solar turbul turbulences and so on. So therefore, um, we need to dig a little bit deeper by technology um, to, let's say, create the fundament um, to make uh, autonomy um, automated systems, let's say, um, ready, ready to go and ready to be used in the daily use and not only for research. And that's where we're heading for. Thank you, Rubens. Um, Juan, you're focusing on uh, coastal topics in your specific challenge. And um, you do have quite a large price pool. What is different to the other challenges, and especially in terms of the price pool, what, what do you offer that others don't? Yeah, that's a good question. And indeed, we are focusing in not only coastal, but also ocean applications, maritime applications at the end. What's different, I believe, from our price pool is that uh, actually we are trying to pro help you network uh, in Europe, but outside Europe, right? We are trying to look for applications for the Atlantic. The Atlantic has to be understood as something common for the different countries and regions around it. So what we are trying to offer is visibility to your company and networking, which we believe is very important to actually scale up your idea. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. Martina, um, last question to you. Oh, no, we, I see one uh, from the audience, so please let me read this out uh, uh, meanwhile. For the space of infrastructure and building monitoring challenge, the solutions must use both Copernicus and EGNS as or one of them is sufficient. Uh, so this question would go to uh, Wojtek. Uh, sorry, for which price it was? For the um, building, ah, so, no, sorry, that was for Martina, basically, <laughs> Infrastructure and Building Monitoring Challenge, yes. European <laughs> Commission. This is, this is for us. <clears throat> so we will certainly not exclude uh, a convincing proposal when it only offers, uh, when it only uses uh, Copernicus or Galileo, but um, the challenge is defined in a way that, in principle, the combined use of two, both data data sources is is required and also will certainly deliver a, a high added value. Mm -hmm. Thank you very so much, Martina. I hope this is this is clear. Um, we will not. I already. An answer. No, he didn't answer yet. But if if uh, there's a follow-up question, then feel free to put it in the question tab, and uh, I will I will address it to Martina again. Okay. Um, Martina, the Commission has been supporting both competitions since more than a decade now. However, in the last two years, you've put a special attention to the development of local and regional space-driven innovation through the introduction of the Copernicus and Galileo prizes. Um, why is this approach important for reaching the next level in the user uptake of the EU space uh, program? And why should our participants apply for a Copernicus and Galileo Prize in addition to the challenges? You mentioned the keyword user uptake. Um, this was already the key mission of uh, our, our unit when we were still in DG Grow. Um, it is definitely uh, a key mission now since we are in DG DFIS. Um, the objective is really to go regional, to bring the advantages um, of Galileo, of um, Copernicus, of Agnes to the regions because uh, we see in many other activities there is a huge potential for regional challenges, uh, even partly regional problems, which can be tackled, even solved by the use of space data and navigation data. And um, these uh, problems are, as I said, uh, partly very specific, but nevertheless for a specific region of uh, high importance. So we see with this going regional also the opportunity for a much broader uptake of uh, the, the space programs, but also 
broadening the field of applications because there are so many ideas coming up and we saw this last year for the first time when we uh, had set the, the Copernicus regional prices and the Galileo prices. Um, there are ideas upcoming uh, which of course we do not know, we did not even think about, but which reflect really the regional particularities. So this is why um, this year again we, we hope to get um, many, many, many regions on, on board and I would like to take the opportunity and thank already them all because it's not easy to, to engage in, in such a competition in these times. So thanks uh, a lot for their commitment and um, our expectations, I would like to say this, are high because the success of last year um, encouraged us to, to go further and uh, yeah, leveled up our expectations. Yes, indeed. Thanks a lot, Martina, for this uh, perfect bridge to uh, our next uh, point on the agenda. Uh, thanks again for all of you um, joining for the Q&A. And now we are jumping into a panel with uh, three prize partners of ours. So please welcome Uli Fricke, Egle Elene Stateite and uh, Merci Sui. Quart. I hope I pronounced it right. Probably not. I'm really sorry for this. <laughs> so they are representing the um, Galileo Prize and Copernicus Prize Bavaria, uh, the Catalonia Prize and the Lithuania Prize also for both competitions. I do see all cameras on. Yes, I do. Uli is an investor in deep tech companies since 1997 and she has invested in space downstream startups since 2007. Today she is joining us in her role as CEO at Foundation, which is also the operator of the crowd um, investing platform Aris C2. And um, of course, as Galileo Price Partner Bavaria. Welcome, Uli. <laughs> Yes, Igle, she runs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Igle, she runs the Lithuanian space office at the Agency for Science, Innovation and Technology, uh, which is the main governmental institution responsible for the implementation of innovation policy in Lithuania. And furthermore, she holds a position in the Horizon Europe NCP, which is the national contact point and is a program um, committee expert for space and security. And Mercy uh, is the project manager of Catalan New Space related project in Kim, the knowledge innovation market that is active in a number of space projects promoting the Spanish and Catalan innovation ecosystem at a national and international level. So again, welcome ladies. Good to see you. <laughs> Good Ines. afternoon, Ines. Um, let's start with Mercy, maybe with the first question. Um, why is it so important for Kim to host the Catalan edition uh, for both Galileo and Copernicus Masters? Well, first, thank you, Ines, and all the other team for giving us the opportunity to represent the prize partners of Southern Europe. And as you were saying, the aim of knowledge innovation market is to boost the local ecosystem in terms of innovation. And in this sense, we are especially focused on the new space sector due to its large innovation opportunities and its capability of generating large investment returns. But here I need to emphasize that this large investment return is basically due to the downstream segment and the infinite marketable applications that can be conceived from satellite data. And this is the reason why these two competitions are so important for our entity and also for the Chamber of Commerce of Barcelona and also for the government of Catalonia, who are both collaborators of our regional prize. Thank you, Missy. Um, Igli, with Lithuania joining for the second time in both competitions, what are the strengths and benefits of uh, your country for the space sector in general and participants to your price in particular? Uh, well, actually, uh, we see both uh, Galileo and Copernicus uh, master's competitions as a perfect opportunity actually to 
students to startups to even grow uh, more mature companies uh, to young graduates uh, to to sh to to show their best and brightest ideas at the international level that is uh, especially important uh, for Lithuania as uh, we will be joining ESA uh, at the end of uh, this year and uh, this international dimension of the competition is very important and that's why uh, we are joining the competition for a second year in a row as, as you have emphasized and also um, uh, the both competitions uh, uh, is a great opportunity to everyone to meet international partners and this in, uh, international partnership is also uh, a very important even a challenge to, to Lithuanian uh, space uh, sector and also uh, it gives uh, the opportunity to solve actually European challenges and it's uh, also a big uh, benefit and the strength of the competition. Thank you Igli. Um, maybe a question to, to all of you. Um, how do you encourage your participants um, to join the prizes? Igli, maybe you would like to start. Um, well, um, actually, it's quite a challenge, and I guess it's um, uh, the same in all, all the countries. But uh, what we engaged in is uh, spreading the, uh, the, the knowledge on, on the competition spreading the news that uh, Lithuania has joined uh, both competitions and there is a brilliant opportunity to test the ideas, uh, to meet new partners and, and uh, to, to add to, to um, uh, solving those uh, European uh, challenges, as I was mentioning. Uh, but um, of course, uh, that uh, needs a lot of uh, investment uh, and uh, spreading the news uh, using various channels is uh, very important. Thanks. Ah, sorry. <laughs> um, Mercy, what are you doing to encourage your participants? Yeah, sure. Um, also referring to what I said before, um, the space sector has a great investment return. And now uh, I would like to point out just a few numbers. Um, a report from London Economics claims that one euro of public investment in space can be translated to two to four of direct return plus four to 12 euros of spillover in earth observation and navigation, which are the thematic of Galileo and Copernicus masters. So definitely the competition provides great market opportunities for entrepreneurships. And also then regarding Catalonia, the, the regional government has recently started implementing the new space strategy for Catalonia, which pretends to support the sector from startups to consolidated companies. And so what I can say here is that Catalonia is a, great, uh, a good region to launch a business idea related to space. So everyone is welcome. Thank you, Mr. for this. Uli, what are you doing as the very Price partner for your participants? So, um, actually, um, first of all, I believe the participants are doing something for everybody because space is nowadays such a big endeavor of innovation and we need innovation in many different areas in order to solve the, the current challenges, whether that's health-related, environmental-related challenges. So, space is an endeavor. And um, Aris C Squared and Funda Nation, we are an endeavor of innovative deep tech startups. So we encourage um, many participants to contribute their ideas to the Bavaria Prize because we would help those startups to find investors and to get the money to, to really realize their technologies, their visions, their business ideas, and to contribute to this challenge that we currently have in Europe and the world to solve our problems. Thank you, Uli. This um, is a perfect, you, the price that you are offering in the Bavaria price is actually quite nice since the um, Thomas Jelle in our panel before with our former winners, he said that investment is something that he actually urgently needs. 
And um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the prize pool that you're offering in the Bavaria Prize. Yes, so the price that we're offering is, um, is, is, we call it the crowd investing price. So we set up the winner of that price to raise money from private individuals through our online platforms, RFC Squared, um, which is targeted towards space related startups and scale ups to find money from private investors. And it's a full program where we talk about defining the helping define the business case um, setting up an online profile doing a marketing campaign for that company to address investors both private individuals and business angel investors and um, we've raised on our online platforms in the last five years more than 10 million euros for deep tech startups so and we see more and more excitement of the space related businesses so we hope that we can help really a number of um, space downstream startups to find good investors there. Mm, what are the requirements for someone that want to get a crowd investing campaign started? Requirement um, is to have a really clear um, business idea, a business plan that can be executed and we can help um, to, to, to finalize that and frame that. Um, there should be a company that is already started, it can be a young company, but we need a legal entity to work with. And we need the desire to talk to um, investors and to get the story and the message out there. And it's a bit like um, one of your earlier panelists today that said um, they were in this um, um, German Brüder der Löwen show. And they got so much um, excitement and feedback, both from potential investors as well as from potential customers. Crowd investing is creating similar, very positive effects. Um, so we need a company who is willing to get their story out there. Timo? Thank you, Uli. A question that I always receive from potential participants is, are they eligible to participate if they are not a citizens of your own price? My answer always is if you want to build your business in this country or you have any other connection to it, no one shall stop you from applying. And I hope this is also the case for, for your prices, Lithuania, um, Bavaria, and of course, Catalan. Um, so please, um, to all our participants and listeners today, feel free to choose uh, one of the prices that are on offer in Galileo Masters and Copernicus Masters and all the contact details of our speakers today are of course also on the website. So if you are unsure um, to join one of the Galileo prices or Copernicus prices or to choose which one, feel free to contact um, our partners. I'm sure that they will be happy to help you uh, any way they can. With this, I have to close uh, our panel and thank you again, ladies, for joining. All the best and um, I wish you a lot of Good submissions for this year. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks. Ciao, bye. Bye. Jumping to our last block of challenges, I would like to um, introduce you to Matthew Edwards. Um, he is our partner uh, from ESA Space Solutions and um, unfortunately he's not with us today, but he sent us a video message that um, we will now um, be able to see. Hello everyone, I'm Matthew Edwards from ESA Space Solutions and today I would like to introduce you to our challenge in the 2021 edition of the Galileo Masters and that is the ESA Space Solutions Scale Up Challenge. But first, what is ESA Space Solutions? So ESA Space Solutions is part of the Directorate of Telecommunications and Integrated Applications and is ESA's door to entrepreneurship. Since the early 2000s, ESA Space Solutions has been seeking entrepreneurs with innovative ideas that are using space technologies or developing applications to create new products and services in a non-space environment. Born as support to Europe's space programs, many technological innovations initially developed for space have turned out to be key enablers for successful solutions back in the terrestrial markets. The transfers from space to Earth enhance the know-how and competitiveness of Europe by creating new startup companies and leading to new jobs and growth. 
we have multiple entry points to our programs based upon the size of your business. For startup companies, there are the ESA Business Incubation Centers, where over 1,000 space-related startups across Europe have now received support to further develop their business plan and to grow their new venture. We have the ESA Business Applications Program, where we support businesses that are a little bit further on in their development, and we help them to reach the pre-commercialization phase with demonstration customers. We also have the ESA Technology Brokers and ESA Spark Funding that provide solutions to more established players in non-space industries through providing them access to a wide range of advanced and disruptive technologies developed by the space industry. We are then able to fund collaborative, commercially oriented projects between the two. Now on to our challenge. Over the years, many great ideas based upon Galileo have been translated into startup companies across Europe. Indeed, many of these have been supported by our own ESA business incubation centers or by other similar programs. An issue often faced across Europe though, is how to take things to the next level. And that is why we've created the ESA Space Solutions Scale Up Challenge. We want to support high potential startup companies to enter the next phase of their development to truly scale up. Startups can be using Galileo to help plan, monitor, predict, and improve solutions in any sector, from transport to agriculture and from smart cities to maritime. For us, the key criteria in this challenge are how innovative is the use of Galileo and how crucial is it to your core product or service? How robust is your business case? Has this been validated by potential users or customers? To what extent have you already developed a technically feasible minimum viable product? Finally, and most importantly, does your startup have the potential to rapidly scale? Applications to the ESA Space Solutions Scale Up Challenge are welcomed from startups all across Europe, both from complete newcomers and from those who have already been supported by ESA in the past. In terms of rewards, for the overall winner, we have a cash prize of 10,000 euros, a slot to pitch in an upcoming ESA investment forum, and a consultation with one of our ESA business applications ambassadors to identify opportunities for further ESA funding. For other promising ideas we received, the ESA Space Solutions team and our business applications ambassadors will also provide these consultations to identify ways in which ESA can support you on your scale-up journey. Thank you, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Mass, for that video, uh, video message to all of us and for the introduction in the Scale-Up Challenge, which is indeed uh, quite new to us in the Galileo Masters and which, as you said, certainly addresses also more mature ideas and uh, solutions and startups that actually need uh, funding and investing. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what submissions you will receive this year. Let's go to um, our next uh, challenge, which is uh, the challenge of planets. See change, change the world. And I'm happy to, to introduce you to Agnieszka Lukaszczyk, the Senior Director at Planet, who will now tell you more about what they are uh, looking for in the Copernicus Masters Challenge. We don't hear you yet, Agnieszka. Ah, sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes, I hear you. Sometimes I just love to talk to myself. Uh, <laughs> this is the you. corona times, you know? It is the corona <laughs> times, you just, you know, you will talk to whoever will listen. Um, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm very excited to be here. It's actually our fourth year that we're participating in Copernicus Masters, which, um, uh, which has been quite an adventure. And we've had really, really great uh, winners. And um, uh, we've been working with great companies. We work with all of them still today. Um, the ones you know that won our challenge from the very beginning, um, uh, four years ago, still are partners. So this is, this is really great. It's not just um to you know get a prize and 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 the relationship is over really it's it's, it's a continuous uh, relationship it's a continuous partnership it's a continuous collaboration so i do hope that all of those who will apply um for our challenge will know that this is a 
um, a process uh, and, 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 and the beginning of a beautiful friendship, as I would like to call it. Um, you will probably not be surprised that our challenge this year focuses again on sustainability issues. Um, I um, We have done that last year as well. It was sustainable development goals. This year we um, are gearing more towards the European Green Deal. I'm sure you all know about it. This is one of the top priorities of the current commission. And I do believe and Planet believes that pretty much all of us um, in Europe um, should care about this and should be engaged in one way or the other. Um, this this deal this european green deal this initiative affects all of us it affects our lives it affects our future it affects it will affect our children we do want to um, breathe the clean earth and drink clear clean water and have beautiful green forests and biodiversity so it is something that we all should participate in and that that is why we want to engage uh, new entrepreneurs and new innovators to come up with um interesting solutions, interesting uh, products or services or applications that um, uh, would use planet data and sentinel data and provide some um, really interesting, um, uh, as I said, solution to aid the European Green Deal. And you really, the, the, the space is the limit, as I would like to say, because um, Green Deal really affects everything. So there is anything from forestry, biodiversity, um, agriculture, uh, clean oceans, fisheries, um, uh, clean air. I mean, you pretty much have the entire, uh, everything that has to do with, with um, um, uh, planet Earth and its ecosystem, it's, it's, it's your playground for this challenge. So uh, be innovative. We, we really want to work with companies that, um, or uh, groups or students that, uh, um, uh, yes, thank you for showing the slides, um, that uh, um, really have this kind of purpose and mission at heart. Uh, you probably know that Planet is a mission-driven company, which means that we were created because we do believe that Earth observation can make a difference in the world we live in and can have a positive impact on the world we live in. And we would like you to um, have that sort of mindset and values. So this is this is really important for us when you're going to apply that um, you are going to see the change and change the world, that you do have a true passion for, um, as cheesy as it sounds, making this world a little bit of a better place. Um, uh, so do keep that in mind. Can I have a next slide with the with prizes? Thank you. So, um, be, but before I get to prizes, I wanted to tell you. I'm, I'm assuming most of you know by now who Planet is. We are a largest operator of Earth observation satellites in the world. We are monitoring every place on Earth every day, and we have actually just um, last week, uh, oh, two weeks ago, we had a big announcement about a fourth constellation. So we have three constellations right now, Rapid Eye, um, uh, Doves, and Skysat. And we are going to have a fourth const constellation called Carbon Mapper, uh, which is gonna, going to be a hyperspectral constellation um, monitoring carbon methane emissions. So very, very exciting. So again, you know, all um, kind of focus on, on sustainability and, um, and environment. Um, but if you will apply uh, for our challenge, um, uh, please do know that you are going to have six months of free access to our planet data. Um, and this is very uh, exciting because you're going to have access to planet scope and to SkySat data. Um, SkySat is the very high resolution 15 centimeter uh, video enabled um, imagery. So um, this is this is this is really quite something. It's quite expensive actually um, if you uh, have to pay for it. So the value is about 125k. Um, uh, we are going to give you consulting, technical, obviously, how to use our data, but also business consulting to help you kind of scale up and, and use the data to help your business. Um, you will, uh, so this is hopefully, I'm not lying right now, um, that you will get a trip to San Francisco to our Planet Explorer conference because I'm fully paid for two people. Um, unfortunately, I said the same thing last year and two years ago, but because of the pandemic, um, that was not possible. So. 
the uh, our winners still presented our conference but it was done virtual this year's conference is also virtual but it's the last year's winner that is going to go to this year's conference you would go in um to 22 so hopefully that will be done already um in person and you will be able to um uh, present your work in front of the top minds of the world uh in the past we had people like um um, Al Gore speak, uh, Jean Cousteau, um, and many, many very, very big names. So hopefully uh, you can be among those names and present your work. And um, and obviously you also have a possibility to access the 10,000 worth of commercial data states from Copernicus contributing missions. Um, so this is very exciting. Please do apply. Please use your mind into how you can how your work can really um, uh, foster the European Green Deal and help us tackle all the challenges that we have on um, on this planet. And we can't wait to uh, read your applications. And we will have a webinar, just the last thing. We're organizing a webinar on June 16th. Um, and this is, I invite you to attend that as well because that will give you a better picture and more detail about our challenge, but also our data. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. And Jeska mentioned it. Um, there will be another webinar from Planet coming up soon. Um, thanks a lot for your presentation, Agnieszka. You didn't even need the slides. I didn't need to change it. I didn't know when to change. And <laughs> because you were already at the challenge and you were back to Planet and then at the party. No, it was awesome. Like You're a good to, speaker. You don't need I it. Like to, I like to spice it up a little bit, you know? I like to keep people on their toes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> It was really good. I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I do see you a little bit later for our Q&A session um, together with Antonio. And um, therefore, I would now uh, like to, yes, perfect, switch off your camera and we go to our next speaker, which is Elisabeth Becker-Löffler. Uh, she unfortunately could also not join today, but she sent us an audio uh, file, which we will play for you now with her slides. Hello together, my name is Elisabeth Becker and I am responsible for all digital and smart farming topics within Biva. So that means I'm really closely working with two of our affiliates, Farm Facts and Worcester, and both of them are using satellite data to make agriculture more sustainable. So I'm really and working every day with satellite data, so that's why I'm really glad to introduce you to our Smart Farming Challenge today. First of all, I want to give you a short overview about our company. So, BIVA was founded in 1923 in Munich. Today, we are a leading service and trading group. Nevertheless, we are still based on our cooperative roots. With the core segments agriculture, energy, and building materials. We are represented in over 3,000 locations in more than 40 countries with more than 22,000 employees. We are looking for innovative solutions that use new technologies, ideas, and products to support sustainable agriculture and horticulture. Here it is particularly important to us this, that the basis of the application is to work with satellite data and that is that it is carved out for what they are used to be for in agriculture. Our price pool is a 5,000 euro cash price monitoring package from Viva Farm Facts and Vista, access to sales platforms and customers through Next Farming, access to Agri, Viva Agri Business and Agri Organization Networks, and access to multiple field trails in multiple countries. Moreover, there's the possibility to access a 10,000 euro worth of commercial data sets from the Copernicus contribution mission in the Copernicus data warehouse. So I'm really happy to read your applications and I wish you all good luck. 
Thanks a lot to Elisabeth as well for her audio message to us. Um, I would like to encourage you again to uh, post your questions in the question tab, um, as we will have uh, at least a short Q&A with two of our speakers from this round. And um, now I see that Antonio already switched on his camera and um, this is our last speaker of today. So the last challenge that you will be introduced to, which is um, the F42 uh, Airbus challenge in the Copernicus Masters. And Antonio Almeida, please. Thank you. Thank you, Ines. You can hear me, right? Yes, we do hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, so thank you very much for this opportunity. So first, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Antonio Almeida. I'm a senior tech evangelist at Up42. Um, and um, please, the, the next slide, Ines. Um, yes. So what is Up42, right? So it's the first time we participate in this challenge. Um, and of course, we're in, in this together with Airbus. Why? Well, we were a company that was set up by Airbus two years ago, and our mission is to democratize access to geospatial data and also to the, to the insights based on this data. So right now, if you want to access uh, satellite data, especially very high resolution satellite data, it's extremely complicated. If you're a small startup or even if you're a research group, this is extremely complicated. Um, there's compliance issues, which makes it hard for you sometimes to get access to this. You have to go through a compliance process. But then there's also like technological and commercial barriers. Um, it's not easy for you to say, I want a high resolution or a very high resolution satellite image, just one, and uh, go to one of the satellite operators, satellite providers, um, and ask for that. So you will need to get with someone on the phone to get to that. And from a technology point of view, this is a very outdated um, you know, industry. Uh, so FTP, for instance, which is uh, an internet protocol from the early 70s, is still pretty much the main delivery mechanism. So they haven't woken up to the web, uh, which has been around since the mid 80s. They haven't woken up to that. So we were set up uh, to change that. Um, we are fully owned by Airbus. And by setting us up, kind of Airbus is trying to address this innovator dilemmas problem, where they're, they're setting up this small startup that, that's us in order to address this, this other market and to reach new, uh, new, uh, new customers. Um, what the, our customers will be, will be uh, either people that are already in the industry, but now they can have more options to access many types of data and also algorithms, but can also be new businesses, new startups that never use geospatial data. And now we are making available for them to access this data in an easy way so they can, you know, accessible to them also from a financial point of view. They don't need to make big commitments up front. They can start with something really simple. So we've been set up uh, like two years ago. Well, we had our product being public. We are four, we were four and a half year, four and a half months in uh, you know private beta since May 2019 until uh, late September 2019. And then what happened is that we opened our platform to the public. In this almost two years, one and a half year, uh, we learned a lot uh, when we work with these companies, uh, helping them do product integrations. Um, one of the things we learn, and this brings us to the, um, uh, to, the, to the main thing in our challenge, which is the main goal of our challenge, is that it's really hard um, to uh, go beyond the physical limitations of satellites. What do I mean by this? I mean, there's a limited number of satellites that you can have up there. Uh, they're quite expensive to build and launch. Um, and there's another thing, which is just think about, for instance, this new uh, satellite that Airbus launched two weeks ago, Playa Neo, that's going to provide 30 centimeter resolution. So a pixel in the ground will be 30 by 30 centimeters. Um, and this is an investment of 800 million euros. So they will have to recover this investment. How they are going to do this, of course, the access to this data will be expensive. Imagine that you want to develop a deep learning algorithm and you would like to train your algorithm with this very high resolution images. This would be prohibitive, be prohibitive because just the amount of data they will need to train the algorithm will make uh, your, your, your endeavor almost impossible from a financial point of view. So what, why do we are you know, uh, putting out this challenge about generating um, synthetic images or feeding, fusing data so that the images can be improved. Why are we putting this out there? Well, 
throughout these two years, we found out that, for instance, we work with some startups in Africa, and one of the problems they have is there's not enough data for them, uh, for instance, to develop a machine learn a deep learning algorithm. Uh, we have one startup that develop a field a field boundary detector, and it works better in Europe than in their own country, which is Nigeria. Uh, even Copernicus just has two satellites, right? Optical satellites, Sentinel, uh, Sentinel two. Um, so we need to go beyond this. If you can use deep learning to augment the data sets, this will open up a huge amount of applications. And for instance, in this company, they would be able to make their field finder algorithm, uh, field boundary finding algorithm, work also in Nigeria. Um, we have also another customer in Chile. He's trying to do crop yield prediction, and he has the same problem. He can't use deep learning because um, there's not enough training data for deep learning. So he's using a traditional machine learning random forest. Um, next slide, please. So what is the prices we're offering? So the values are not here, but I will tell you. So there's a one atlas price, which is 80,000 euros, and this will allow you to access all the commercial data from Airbus. So hopefully, um, uh, this is still being worked out. Um, you will be able to even access Pay and Nail if you're the winner of this price, uh, of this challenge. Um, then there's also a voucher from us, which is 20,000 euros, and this allows you also to access the same uh, Airbus commercial data, very high resolution data, and also commercial data from other providers. Um, and uh, for instance, also very high resolution radar images, if you're interested in that. And also, um, you know, algorithms, because we have a marketplace, right? So we have a marketplace where partners come and they place their algorithms, their, their data offerings, and you can also use everything that is there with this 20,000 euro uh, voucher. And of course, there's a, um, another price from the European Commission of 10,000 euros also to access to this commercial data sets. So just, just to develop a little bit more, we are very specific in this terms of the challenge, so a little bit different from the other challenges, because we are trying to address a problem we see at, and that we think is a thing that is really blocking, uh, you know, uh, widespread applications of this geospatial data. If we can move beyond this with quality synthetic imagery, uh, then it, we will just be able you know, to really expand and grow even exponentially this type of applications. Um, I will be uh, a little bit revealing the thing, uh, the thing a little bit, but I will be uh, later in the month doing a webinar where I will explain um, you know, how to use Hub42, how you could build a machine a deep learning training pipeline using a 42. Um, so this is um, this is what you know is our challenge. Um, we are you know inviting researchers. We're inviting small companies, uh, startups. Um, there's business potential not only for you to develop your business, but even if you want to become one of our partners and contribute to your algorithm on our uh, marketplace for, for everyone that can access it, use it. Um, and um, that's pretty much, so next slide, please. Yes, so if you want to reach out to me, uh, I'm sure that uh, you, you, Ines can provide you with, uh, with the uh, details to access, uh, you know, to, to my email, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Antonio. Your email was already in the first slide, but of course, all participants also find your contact details on our website, on the sub page specifically to your challenge. So feel free to check out the website and um, contact Antonio there. But for now, we do still have the Q&A session. Therefore, um, Agnieszka, if you're still there, it would be nice if you could switch on your camera again and turn your microphone on. Perfect. I see you again. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Maybe we can start right away with you, Agnieszka. I, I've seen a post yesterday that Planet is uh, now partnering with Live.io, which is uh, really nice to hear. Um, yeah, since also the BMVI mentioned it uh, in their presentation uh, in the very beginning of our event today, would you like to tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a um... I don't actually know all the details, so um, uh, that's, uh, that's a difficult question that you asked, but indeed we have announced our partnership with LiveEO. We have actually been working with them for quite some time. Um, 
they are based in Berlin as we are as well. So we have been working together on, on, on many things and that partnership has grown and, and we really do believe that they can um, use our data and, and um, uh, build some solid uh, products out of it. So looking forward to see what's going to come out of it. To, to winners of the Copernicus Masters and Galileo Masters that they join with our partners currently. Uh, you also have started as a small startup and have grown rapidly and are now partner of the competition and joining with one of our former winners. So is this also the path that you're seeing for your uh, challenge winners? Mm, absolutely, absolutely. I think this is uh, this is the key, you know, to 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 pay it forward sort of thing, you know, and for us at Planet, this is this is a, a kind of big part of our work, big part of our journey. We are a young company as well. We are barely 10 years old and we've, you know, started in the garage and, um, and just with few uh, interested, uh, passionate people who wanted to build and do something different. Um, and they had they had to fundraise, they had to fund the money, and they had and they were building something from scratch. And 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 we were very fortunate that we were able to do some you know solid fundraising and and grow um, fairly fast. So it's just almost you know we always say if we can do it, anybody else can. And we know we know the growing pains, we know how difficult it is, but we also know that it's possible. It's just really important to find that product or that um, idea that is that is really needed, and then there is market for it. So um, yeah, and, and, and have a mission. That's, that's what we're encouraging everybody to do. Mm, what would be the three short messages that you could give to potential participants of the Planet Challenge, how to succeed in your challenge? Yeah, so, um, like, so yeah, so the first one is have a mission, have a purpose, um, make sure that whatever you're offering will impact positively sustainability efforts that uh, that Europe is um, uh, embarking on right now, particularly within the European Green Deal. So that's number one. Um, have, a, have a good business plan because sometimes, you know, we see in applications that there are great ideas, um, uh, but they're not very feasible, you know? So we see, yeah, this is great, but like, how are you going to actually enter the market and how can you actually make this, make the business out of it? Because at the end of the day, that's what this Copernicus uh, Masters uh, competition is about. You know, it's not just about great ideas, but about actually turning great ideas into business opportunities. So, so really think about that um, and use advisors and use, you know, because we, and also we know that at Planet, just because you're a brilliant engineer doesn't mean you're a good businessman. I mean, very often you're not. Um, I hate to break it. So, so, so work with people. You don't get advice, and um, and and having a great idea is just half of the success. So the business aspect is 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 um, is is good. And the third one would be, you know, persistence, because um, you know um, things may not work, and 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 you might not get the your, your prototype might not work of whatever you're working, and it's okay. You know, we um, there's this uh, saying in the Silicon Valley that if you haven't, your idea hasn't failed at least three times, that means that it's not innovative enough. So, so don't be afraid to fail and 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 be bold and try to and try to propose something that is different. You know, because we see a lot of like, for instance, we've seen a lot um, last year, which are great things, but for instance, AI for forestry, and, and we've seen a lot of that. We had already winners in that. We want to see something different, something new, something that um, is just going to blow us away. What you just said uh, as a last point um, always reminds me of one winner that uh, we had in 2019, I think, as well. And he became a um, triple, triple winner, double winner. I don't remember. He uh, actually won definitely a challenge and a prize. And um, he told us when, when he got the note uh, that he won the challenges, um, that he applied several times to the Galileo Masters uh, to uh, be finally successful. So even if your idea didn't succeed once, don't give up. As Anjeska said, sure. <laughs> just try it again, overthink it, uh, think into different directions and um, yeah, try again and submit your solution again. And uh, we are always happy to, to receive new and updated submissions. Absolutely. Um, furthermore, I, I <laughs> wanted to, to know from you, Agnieszka, um, how important you think that um, the industry and commercial companies are, are joining uh, the competition as well and um, how they support the companies and startups on their way to success. 
Yeah, I think it's a it's a good, very good question. I think it's very important. It's important because because the EO ecosystem is it's 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 very comprehensive and it's and it's not just public sector. So um, it's uh, th there are companies there. There's the public sector. There are institutions. There there's there's the academia. And I think we need to all collaborate together and show that everybody has a part to play. Um, so and also show that you know it's all about complementing each other and uh, co collaboration and cooperation. So for us, um, being part of this um, uh, this competition, working together with ESA, with the European Commission, with DLR, but also um, other companies, um, it's it's great because it actually shows that we have so many similarities and we have so many um, uh, very similar objectives and purposes, and we can definitely do a lot more together than we can do separately. And especially if you look at these um, sustainability efforts that um, uh, Planet is very feels very strongly about, like the European Green Deal, there's just no way that one type of entity can actually tackle that. So we do have to work together. Um, this is actually the beauty of the space sector in general that um, it is it is very global and um, it doesn't see any borders. So this competition really is showing that. And it's showing that you can be successful in um, in this, for instance, Earth Observation or or GNSS, working together with commercial players and with public sector. Um, and you just have to find your niche and see um, what works best uh, for you. But it's but that this is definitely a place for collaboration. Is this um, also something that uh, you would uh, you would sign, Antonio, as uh, Airbus and Up42? Uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, we are, we are always open, you know, to people uh, building new things uh, on top of uh, what we offer, and specifically addressing the problem we have on this challenge. I mean, there's a there's a lot of opportunities, not only uh, for commercial entities, but also for for research, you, you know, universities, uh, uh, because it's uh, it's quite a leading edge topic, this against topic. So yeah, we we're, we're definitely interested in all types of organizations that can contribute to this challenge. We're not just focused exclusively on on companies. Of course, we think this is potential to have huge business implications, but anyone could participate. Uh, we, in, we invite you. So, mm, what, is, what is also most interesting for this specific panel with the two of you is that LifeEO seems to be in the middle of us and we should have invited them for the <laughs> for this sure. panel as well. Sure. Uh, because actually I, I, I looked up a quote um, from Daniel Seidel from LifeEO that um, and tells us a little bit about Up42. So let me quickly read it out to you. Up42 is the democratizing access to geospatial data and the potential applications are endless. So, um, yeah, Antonio, this is definitely also a partner with whom you are working with. Could you elaborate on it a little bit? Sure, sure. We've been working with them uh, for some time. In fact, I was in the one of the new space meetups they used to organize before this corona thing came up. Um, uh, just a few days after I started up 42. This was just like May 2019. Um, or late April. Um, so we've been working with them since the beginning, and they were our co, we called the, at the time, co-creation partners. So we're, why we were being incubated, um, they were already working with us. Um, so they've been really important, providing feedback, you know, in guiding us in terms of the product development, or the, what type of features, what type of uh, uh, products, data, or, or uh, algorithmic products we should have on our platform. So we have a very um, uh, close cooperation with them also. It's, since since the beginning, since the beginning, since even before we went public. So, uh, yes. Is this also something that you would uh, be able to promise to a potential participant to the F42 and the Airbus Challenge this year? Uh, sure. I mean, we do this. Uh, for, like, the example I gave about this uh, African startups, it's we have been kind of helping them um, get over the the hump that is being able to understand geospatial data, in particular satellite imagery. Um, so we have some experience with that and, you know, uh, uh, investments in Africa, they're not going to get to re give you returns in two to three years. It's, it's a longer term play. So if we do that, we can also do that for any other company in any other part of the world. So yes, sure. If you have an interesting idea, we can cooperate with you and we will help you along the way. Um, not so much on the business side. On the business side, maybe we could work together with the ESA big um, centers. So for instance, I had some cooperation with the EZ Big Switzerland. Um, 
you can work with a video local big for the business side and we can give you the technical support uh, you know and and access to the platform and even technical coaching sort of like uh, we do it with this african startups thank you antonio so it seems that someone wants to say hi on yeshka <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, there is a there is a space cat over here that really wants to apply uh, for Copernicus Masters. So um, get ready. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> Maybe the same question that I asked uh, you and Yeshka um, uh, before that, uh, Antonio. Um, what are the three short messages to potential participants of that 42 Abbas challenge that you would like to? Yeah. Well, Say as a um, final word. Yes, three, three, three short messages. Um, even if you don't participate, you should listen to the to the webinar because it might give you some ideas. Even if you're not an expert in deep learning, um, um, learn deep learning. Uh, although you know there's an overflow and maybe it's too much um, saturation of AI ideas. There's not a saturation of new. AI ideas and saturation of things that are already well thought out, um, but not about things that are bleeding edge like the, the current challenge we, we set. And yeah, and don't be afraid just because a topic is a sort of research topic doesn't mean that you should be fear it because there's more opportunities there if, you, if you're really able to solve the problem than for something that is already very well understood. Perfect. Thanks uh, to the both of you for these last three recommendations for our participants. And we are at the end of our first ride along the space of innovation highway. <laughs> we are now just um, yeah, starting with the webinars that Antonia and Agnieszka already announced. So what you saw in the beginning and what you see again here on the slide is kind of our space of innovation highway with uh, the events that are already scheduled but there will be coming up further events so please stay tuned on our website um, for the most recent um, recent updates and events coming also of course the news can be found in the newsletter and um, on social media so please feel free to follow us on facebook twitter linkedin and uh, as well on instagram just newly we got an azo account that we would like to invite you to follow as well. With um, these words, I would like to thank again all our speakers uh, of today. I know that we are a little bit over time. I hope that nevertheless uh, it was interesting for all of you and that you learned a lot um, with this first event of our Space of Innovation Highway journey. And um, yeah, I would also like to thank, of course, uh, my team to making this all possible today. Um, and I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing plenty of uh, your submissions and your innovative solutions to the Galileo Masters and the Copernicus Masters in the coming few weeks. Have a nice day and thank you for joining.